Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew Wednesday hey. edition. We've got Erlen back, of course, for Wednesday's show. It's good to be here, guys. Yeah, it's good to be back again doing these shows. Um, yeah, we kind of missed it for uh, what a month. About and, a month. And yeah. this is the second one now, so it feels, yeah. it's starting second to get one for you. Yeah, second <laughs> one for me. It's like back into the rhythm of stuff, you yeah. know. So welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, where we play uh, new games on classic consoles. I have to change that that phrase because. I just realized I was up at the fridge, and I've got s these magnets from Atari Age, and it's that's that phrase is like almost exactly the same as their catchphrase. Is it? What's their catchphrase? New games for classic systems. <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. Maybe unconsciously, I, I. You're like, like I nailed it. Ah, oh, it's such a good phrase. No, I, I remember. I'll have to figure that because we don't. We only really play one console. I remember at one point I was a teenager and I was like, guys, I got this melody in my head. And I was like, <laughs> try to like figure it out. And then I realized it was just like, um, the, like what, what's the one like, do, 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 do. I was like, oh, this is a, just ripping this off uh, from a thing. It was yeah. one of those embarrassing moments in my life because I thought I was a musical genius. And I realized <laughs> I was just literally transcribing a song that I had heard. It happens. And like, was, people get sued over those things. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I made this great thing up. But it's like. No, you've heard it a million times. times from this song, and you're just not realizing it. And then you think that you made it up, which is which the, is the, even worse. It's which like, is <laughs> the nightmare as a creative that you'll discover that you're a hack because everything you've ever done is like, <laughs> but like such a rip off. But you can do tributes. You can do it's homages. So true. You have to make it your own, though. You have to totally. do it in your way. Um, and it, and I think it's it's like totally cool to start imitating something and then it evolves yes. naturally. But I th but there's many times in my life I've thought that I've cracked the code <laughs> to something and then realized it's just something that I've heard somewhere. It happens all the time. That was that's why I'm not a musical composer because <laughs> all of the melodies that I've composed are actually just things I've already heard. <laughs> yeah. So welcome everybody to the show, uh, Mr. Fix, Splendid Nut, to Dianoid 77, Thrust 26, Ice Bosta, um, did I say Mr. Fix? Yep. Uh, Dan AVC, and everybody else who is um, just kind of hanging out, yeah. not saying anything, which is totally fine. That oh, got no. unplugged. Oh no. Uh, it's just his laptop, it'll be okay. As long it's, as it's, it's plugged just, in, this the plug is really it's loose just on mega it. Mega annoying. It's what what it is for us is our setup is one where we have to see chat and, and play. seventy three. So yeah. like we have the laptop to be able to read your chat. So that's where like uh, if the laptop goes, it's like oh We're we like, can't read uh, you guys. We don't know what you said. There we go. And we, and we want to be able to talk to you. That's right. We want to hear your feedback because your feedback is important to us here what? at Zero Page Homebrew. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and it's also we we'll just <laughs> suck, man, if we're just sitting here and never just reading chat. Ourselves. You know, it'd be, yeah. it'd be a different experience for everybody. Um, so we got five games today. Holy shit. Cool. Yes. Uh, we've got, sorry, go. I was going to say probably not like five stacks <laughs> no. length games. No, or, no, no. You know, Sometimes but, they're little games. You that's know? cool. Not though. every game is this massive thing. So I gotta, you know, put those in once in a while. Simple, Absolutely. simple concept games. We've got chaotic the mixtape, grill. you know. That's right. <laughs> Short punk songs, mm -hmm. one minute long. Uh, we've got chaotic grill, um, uh, flappo bird, flappy. Uh, you oh. can't win and caverns. Oh, we're gonna win. Well, we will. <laughs> <laughs> we will defeat it. Uh, I don't. I don't like titles like that. <laughs> you, yeah, it's a challenge, right? It's like. Like, I bet you can't. That's reverse it's, psychology advertisement right there. Like, uh, if you won't buy this product. That's right. You know what? Don't buy this book. <laughs> or it's like the unbeatable dragon. Well, we'll yeah. see about that. I just Dark Souls was totally marketed as that, which was brilliant. The it's hardest hard. game you'll ever play. So that was their marketing? Oh, and that everybody was. totally bought into it. Oh, for sure. Because that's all you hear about Dark Souls, which I've heard it actually it is, is hard. It is a challenging game for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, like... Yeah, the cool thing about Dark Souls is that it does make a huge difference, little details. Mm. So it is like, it's a, if you don't like invest in understanding the mechanics <laughs> and like some of the items die, and levels, die, die, die. it's yeah. like good luck. Yeah. But it's, yeah. But also I think third person, that style of games is actually, I find it quite hard for controller it wise. can be because you, you can't directly see what your player totally. is seeing. Um, first person is like, no, this is what 
is in front of you. This is what you're hitting. Third person, you can maybe spin too easily and turn yeah. around, get turned around. Uh, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers. Hey, Twitch subscribers. Charles and Check, Gretams, Ground Trooper, Johnny <coughs> WC23, Mr. Fix, Nathan Strum, RC70, Retro Happy Hour, Sir Cat Legs. Mm. Is that a new one? That's a new one. That's for sure a new one. I don't S recognize that name. Sound at all. Wizard. That's a new, That's one, a new too, one too, man. Thank you very hey, much, man. these silent people that are uh, supporting the show. Uh, Spiceware, uh, S. Ramirez, two thousand eight, and Tiki Dan Can. You can support the show too by uh for free if you link your amazon prime to your twitch prime and click subscribe uh we do have another poll question oh coming to me. maybe it's the break maybe it's the break that was, gonna, uh, let's find out what, what are we gonna poll today so let's put it up on the screen for people and i did fix the poll uh voting now you can vote for more than one okay thing. good because it's always been Last a bit time, of a disaster it was a setting it was oh, on, thank God. It was on this end. So you can vote for as many as you want. I think uh, you do it either with spaces or individual lines, but you can vote for more than one. You cannot take back votes. So make sure if you type the, lum the number that it is the number. Uh, okay. You said you missed the last one. Is that a new name too? Uh, hello, it's Wednesday again. I'm possibly, uh, uh, I think he means the the, the Twitch, the, the subscribers. Oh, that's okay. my that's my that's what I think Thrust is saying. Maybe I don't know. Okay, so start the poll. Let's There's only three up. answers. Very simple. Um, okay, the poll question is: Would a secure ROM format for Atari Twenty Six Hundred games be something that you'd be interested in as a developer or okay. a gamer? Now, what I mean by secure ROM format is that normally Atari games are either on a cartridge mm -hmm. that you buy or a free download. Um, there is no DRM right now. There's no, like, here is your copy of it. You bought this copy. It's not transferable. It's only for you. You can't share it. If you try and share it, it won't work on somebody else's system. Wow. Um, in television, mm -hmm. has a system like this. They have a cartridge that is <laughs> mallards it's called the lto flash cartridge it's up where there somewhere um and it has an individual id um it's called a druid uh i could not find for the life of me what this stands for other than dr and unique id like i don't know friends uh, you might need to put in numbers I mean, you yes, could, no, yeah, put in numbers. <laughs> you could totally know. just type, well, you're letting us know. I'm, I'm happy to hear it, but I think... Let the poll know. I think it's, we need some data. We need our data. <laughs> That's right. We so, want our graph. Yeah. Uh, let me put it up on the screen. How right. should that work is what thrust. How should that... Right. Well, we're going to tell you. Oh, okay, cool. We were... Um, so the, the answers to the questions are, yes, it would save costs and time for distribution of games. The future is digital. It's true. Um, so costs would be you don't have to put it on a cartridge. Um, time, you'd get it instantly, no shipping. Or Al doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, box up all this stuff. <laughs> um, to, uh, the answer two, no, I love box copies and physical cartridges to collect and own. And to be able to sell afterwards if you want. Three, DRM is of the devil. Data wants to be free. Um, so in television, games have a digital distribution system through the LTO flash cartridge where they're able to encrypt a ROM to your specific cart when you buy a game from a distributor. Their system is called the LTO Flash's Druid DR Unique ID, and the encryption is based on the first five digits of your Druid ID. Whoa. It's redundant. It's like saying ATM machine yeah. um, pin number. Um, so each of these cartridges has its own unique ID, and they have some sort of calculator that you can encrypt the ROM so that it only works on your so every everyone that gets bought um i know a good R D, uh, drm watermarked roms that is another option as well oh yeah uh, and i've seen that done on atari games where they put your name in it like burnt into the rom that's what they I do mean, with scripts to make sure people don't leak any atari thing, games right? are pretty easily hacked though so you'd have to, mm, to be a little bit careful with that um personally i have reservations about this type of system just because of the way i am <laughs> just like I do with any digital distribution system. That means if your LTO flash cart stops working in the future, uh, all of your purchased games will stop working. See, that's not good. And, uh, and unless you can convince the original distributor 
that, oh, it died and I bought a new LTO flashcard and you have to give me the new, another version of the game for free if that distributor's still around. Well, that's the thing, man. The turnaround is not... Uh... Yeah. And um, also, why would you want to put labor into like correcting people's things? That would be a you've, rough. You've gig. already made your money. And now five years later, when all those game sales are done, it's like, well, People now like, I can encrypt it again. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, is the LTO flash cart still going to be around? Um, so that's the reservations I have with even modern um, gaming uh, distribution, digital yeah. distribution systems, like for the <clears throat> PS4. If your PS4 dies, um, th theirs is a bit better because you can transfer your name to another PS4. Yeah. But you have to download it from their store. And if the store is dead, then or they've pulled that game, which does happen, the game is gone, you don't even have a chance to, just, to download it again, you're screwed. So you never actually really own the game, right? That's true, man. Um, so if 20 years later you want to play... You know Bob's Adventure <laughs> again for because oh I've I've great memories of it. And you plug in your PS4 and it's dead. The store is down. The distributor's gone. They never released it on physical. You're not playing that game ever again. Yeah, man. I, I have I have Atari cartridges from forty, you know, forty two years now ago that were made forty two years ago. You can plug in and play any time you want. It's, there's a longevity to that, man. Like, my yeah. Steam account is great because, you know, you can just download it onto a new thing. And mm -hmm. But the issue is, is there's a lot of ports from, like, older games that got gone onto Steam and then actually don't, are so buggy you can't even really play them. Yeah. Because there's just, because it's just the way the conversion works. I mean, if you're dealing with different, um, uh, it's just not, it's not going to translate so easily. So that's the other issue, too, is as hardware like PCs are constantly updated and you're trying to play like old games and so mm -hmm. like you might and that's one thing that I've been frustrated with I've bought Steam games yep. and actually gone to play them and they are unplayable and I've just dropped like $15 and I'll find so out so they're just like, going for a quick buck there's no effort put into um, oh CP troubleshooting them what's that mean uh, I don't know apparently he wants you to know CPS2 maybe it's a game um, <clears throat> so I can see I can see the argument for digital distribution. Yeah. There are a lot of benefits in that respect. Capcom like I, System Two. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what it means. It's, it's, it's uh, Capcom Capcom's a company. System uh -oh. Two. I have no idea. Is that a game? It doesn't sound like a game. It doesn't sound like a very fun game. System Two it sounds like, like more like a console. It does sound like a console. Um, yeah, it's faster to distribute. It's cheaper for you Ooh. as a as a gamer. It's cheaper for oh, the company. Oh, I bet you this might be like a game that that is the case for. Oh, like it disappeared. Yeah, or it's, like or, it's or crap. that or that it is. He might just be giving a total. I bet you that's what it is. Is giving an example of. Um, let's find out. Let's let's. Uh, the Dead Battery Society. The historical preservation. Capcom suicide battery. Okay. That's uh, so intense. Oh, uh, it looks like if a battery is dead on a cartridge or the game, it's dead forever. Oh, that might be like the it's case. like it's a timeout on it. I don't know. We don't have time to read that right now, but um, at least for Intellivision, free release will come out eventually, and that's another argument for the digital distribution of games. Some of them, some of these companies, and I believe Steam does too. They promise. They promise. They promise that if they ever go out of business. All the games will be freed. Interesting. Like that. Yes, they'll be given. A, I, I don't know how they can make that guarantee with all these companies. No, it's I'm, like oh yeah, I'm, your game will be able to be played forever, um, and it'll, you can do whatever you want with it and transfer systems. That means it can be pirated in well, two yeah. seconds. Like how can they make agreements with every single company? Absolutely. That are still making money on these games, still using the IPs. Yeah. So it's it's. Digital distribution is, is difficult and um, makes me very wary. Watermarks, Thrust said, I I can't see watermarks working for Atari games because they're not complex enough. You can't build that in yeah. to it. Um, like, they do that for movies um, when they're doing screenings. Uh, before the film is out, they'll put the name of the person on it that yep. is looking at it or editing it or so doing that way sound they're screwed for it. if it ever gets like that leaked. person would get fired 
but that's an industry person. Mm -hmm. These are not consumers. Consumers don't care if their name gets out. How are they going to be banned Steve. from it? It's like, what? Yeah. Steve distributed this game? It's like, oh, well, Steve Also, like, banned. why would you type in your name? Yeah, you that give would a be fake like, name. You know? uh, Mallard Games. ROM held the dec decryption key in RAM. When the battery died, the game went kaput. Somebody tried to boot like the ROM kills RAM. Okay, interesting. Oh, sweet. This can explain in detail. Oh, thrust. Yeah, if you could follow that up uh, that sounds cool. with the watermarking uh, information, uh, that would be really interesting. We can um, discuss it the next show because I have some follow-ups from the, other shows as well the, here. The, the moral, unfortunately, might be that nothing lasts forever. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately. Except for Atari cartridges. The, the, the time... They, they last pretty... Pretty long you time. know, and that's that's one of the challenges as well. I mean, but then I'd love to be able to share stuff with um, you know future generations. Yeah. But I want to play the games you played. Well, yeah. you never hear that, but um. no, you never do. You you sit the kid <laughs> down like, in front here, of the TV, play these awesome games that I played as a kid. They're like, like these Ugh. suck. When I was a kid, it's all to, we had. You had to put a quarter into a machine. <laughs> a okay, but I'm gonna go play my Wii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mail, news, and feedback. I bought this recently. Ooh. Um, see if you can figure out what this is. Okay. Um, um, because I've always, I, for a while, I've geez. wanted to buy this. And this is normally for cameras. And what it is, is a an SD card yeah, that you can use, you know, in your Harmony cart or Uno cart. And this one I got, it was specifically, it was 32 gigs. I think I have an idea what this is. I have a theory. They're normally for photographers. Yeah. And what they do is you put it in your camera, you take a photo, it'll automatically get uploaded to your tablet or phone yeah, or laptop. Yeah, it's got a wireless it's aspect. Got, it has got wireless built into it. And it acts as a hotspot so you can connect your um, tablet or whatever Jesus. phone so that you can upload it instantly to instagram or facebook or whatever you want it's great for photographers doing things quickly especially laptops so that's what really also for safety what it's for yeah for safety it gives, gives you an extra copy of it if you're doing studio shooting and whatnot and you can have a big screen to look at it as well i've seen a lot of photographers do that actually they they usually have a wire um but this yeah. is also useful but it's not as fast um so they can see the results instantly on their laptop and go okay that is a good shot Wi-Fi SD flash card, yes. Um, Tanya's camera has one built in. Whoa. It has a Wi-Fi uh, built in, so it automatically can transfer over. But I didn't buy this for a camera. I don't imagine so. <laughs> and why would I be talking about that on this show? I, I bought this for my Atari 2600 so that I don't have to take that card out of my machine Constantly. ever again. Yeah, it's also good. I can transfer directly from my computer over there. Smart for wear and tear, too. Every time you pull yes. something in and out of the thing. Yeah, the spring gets a little bit more worn. Um, the connectors get more worn. Great for developers as well. Yeah, because you can just, like, keep uploading your, your new version, your new version, your new version over again without even having a wire going because that's what they usually, they usually use. And I want to uh, thank Thomas Yentz, Thrust26, for helping me narrow down the choices out there and point me to the resources to update the card. They're because are fairly a... fast, too. Oh, it's fast this enough. One's, this I'm... one's good enough for what you're doing. Oh, Hell yeah. You know, really slow could be fine. I mean, yeah, because <laughs> for... wireless friggin', I mean, shooting like 4K video yeah. is a very different thing than... Oh, that's not than sending fast some, enough. some friggin'... And there's a whole hacking community um, that is altering this card. Mostly it's meant for hotspots. Wow. Uh, used as a hotspot, but there's a hacking community that has made this so it has a web interface and can connect up to your wireless network. Oh, jeez! So you don't have to connect directly to it because I have a, a desktop computer. Yeah. And you can't. I don't really have a Wi-Fi card in it, and I don't want to take it off the network. Yeah. So this is going to be really, really awesome. Uh, I supposed to brought bought the wrong brand. It works only. Oh, mine only I works suppose in my camera. so, man. Yeah, there was one that only works in the camera. I can't remember what brand that was, but probably Sony. Because <laughs> that's, that's be... the way Sony works. Oh, is there some feedback? You said it's uh, the... We're getting to that. Oh, I'm excited. I don't know what this is, but... And I'm my always... composite... Um, HDMI to composite adapter came in. Wow. Uh, it is garbage and does not work. 
No. I plug it in. It works for two seconds. It looks really clean. And yeah, really it like, looks like a great little device. But. but it's garbage, and I looked on the reviews, and they're all saying it's garbage. My my problem is a unique one. It goes up for two seconds and then disappears. Ugh. Everybody else is like, oh, it failed after a month or whatever, yeah, or it never like, worked at all. Mine failed after two seconds. It's a but bad... the company is offering to send another one to me. Which so I hopefully you... this is just defective. But this is for to put the... The monitor here for the 12 hour marathon so we can have the call-ins of so the developers people, right yeah, here that's gonna be, be super cool um so we'll see we'll yeah, see and that, that got bumped back a week eh or two weeks two weeks yeah um so some feedback from last show's topic of whether arm chip has spoiled gamers and developers Ooh. um that was friday's show okay um because some people are like oh my god uh you know, Galaga is the best thing ever, and we can't ever do a game as good as that, so we might as well quit. Don't quit. And also, gamers are now spoiled. They won't like our blocky games. They won't like this or that. And I'm like, no, it's down to gameplay. It doesn't Dude. matter how good it looks or how good it sounds. Dude, look it's at The gameplay. Witcher 3. The cat's out of the bag on that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not like we can't go to like some fucking crazy graphics, new-gen stuff. We're here because yeah. we like playing these games man on these old consoles yeah, yeah. And that's that was my attitude but here's um i don't know some feedback from uh thomas yance oh, he's in the hey, chat, he's here. um you are missing the essential question are these still atari 2600 games Ooh. and that is kind of valid <laughs> because at this point when they're using the arm chip they're pushing it to an extent where the Atari 2600 is just... Dude, a Camp 73 is speaking my gamer. language here, man. <laughs> Gamers are a whiny bunch. They are this very is... entitled and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, any any group that can like pick like a... Like, I'm a PS4 guy. It's like, it's the same game. It doesn't matter. Anyways, yeah. we're down a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, are these still Atari 2600 games? Because the some of the ARM programs are essentially using the 2600 as a video card. An audio, an audio card output. Yeah. Uh, it's doing all the calculation on the arm. But obviously it is still, in my opinion, still Atari 2600 because there is still limitations. Um, but some people see it as like, well, no, you're just feeding it data at that point. The, the Atari's not doing it anymore. But there's been plenty of examples of that throughout the ages. Uh, SNES had a mode uh what is it a super effects chip or uh, mixing all the names up but it had a chip on the cartridges that did that as well and nobody said nobody said that it was not an snes game and also even pc games yeah man it's like oh no you added a video card into it therefore you're not using the processor and these aren't pc games anymore no it's it's an add-on if if an ARM chip came out during the time, which it did, of the Atari 2600, not an ARM chip, but the DPC chip for Pitfall, Pitfall 2, nobody said that wasn't an Atari game, right? They, they didn't go, oh, that's too, no, that's too much. No, David Crane, you can't put that chip in there. It's wrecking the whole environment and infrastructure of the Atari 2600. We cannot have graphics this good. We cannot have this three voice sound anymore. No, it's no good. It is it is part of it. Uh, Splendid enough, there was a bunch of different co-processors used in SNES games. Yeah. Plenty of examples of carts pushing the limit. Uh, pushing the limits. Yeah, there is more RAM in some carts. Yeah. Um, there were Atari carts that hooked up to the telephone lines that fed information from an outside source. What a crazy time to be developing games. Yeah, there was, there was the uh, games that were stored on uh, cassettes. That's using something that was outside of the Atari 2600 environment. Um, I can see where he's coming from. Where it's, it's a good question. It's a yeah. juicy question. It is. It's a um, very good question. And Thrust 26 says, I can understand Andrew. He is not the only one. Andrew is the person who brought this point up. Um, and that uh, that people's interest as gamers have waned in the smaller games now that the bigger games have come out like Galaga and Mappy they're like well we don't want to play the the crappy looking games anymore um, yeah. I don't know if that's real or not but as I, I said know. you can pop over to a friggin Steam PS4, account yeah. and play 
like crazy, crazy advanced stuff, you know? Like the so, gap is massive. Yes. Like I mean, re- the new Red Dead Redemption. That's insane. Yeah. You know, but that's the thing is like the reason why we go here is because um, it's cool. It's yeah. fun to play Atari games, but I do understand the feeling as well of like you know these things are getting pushed far. But I mean, yeah. that's the that's also evolution. I mean, I would I that's would hate to opinion. sort of be like. Because the cool thing is, is that I feel like the homebrew community has already pushed the Atari and taken it somewhere further, and I'd love to see it always be pushed further. Yeah, I think that's, more add-ons. Well, yeah, why not? It'd be <laughs> yeah. more interesting to sort of see how far, because that's that's called creativity and in, 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 in being, you know, yeah. uh, inventive, and pushing the limits of what this thing can do. And I'd love to see people push it in different ways. I mean, and then yeah. it, maybe maybe you lose the classification of an Atari game. Maybe it's just a homebrew game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but call it whatever you want. Um, and Thomas also said, Enthusi has stopped uh, making games because of this. And he's the guy who made Assembloids, which is uh, up yeah. there. Which is a really amazing uh, 4K game. Uh, he, What he commented uh, saying, Restricting myself to 4K was in, very important to me, since I consider it in the original spirit of the machine for sure man and and if uh, that's your creative process man i would never yeah. take that away from you that's so cool and i think this is a really like i bought it look i bought this game it's 4k it's like what uh, um i think people are saying oh it's not you don't get the value out of it because mm-hmm. there's games selling for the same price that are you know that's galaga it's like yeah. well if you had a choice would you pick galaga or assembloids it's like, well, I pick them both. <laughs> They're both good. It depends on what you're wanting to do, you know? And and the way you want to challenge yourself. And and I think... I want, I want like, there to be room for all of them. I think the big fear, the, the bottom line, is that they want to make games that people will buy. Yes. And, and spend money on. And they are thinking that gamers have... They have limited amount of money. Mm-hmm. And they're always going to pick the arm games over you know a 4k game or an 8k game or even 64k game um i think one i think it's gameplay and i also think there's a there's a there's there's an apples and oranges thing too i mean when you're porting something that was played in the arcade onto the atari it's beloved it has there's history you're you're yeah you're taking all that history and you're also in some ways fulfilling a kind of dream of like oh my god imagine that thing that i used to have to jam quarters into i can just play that at home on the thing i would have done that's a different experience in a new game that's like something you've never seen before like um, uh, like a gizzle whap is a good example where like <laughs> they, you know someone just yeah. being inventive and creating something that's that I've never seen before and you'd never think about and would never would be, I don't know like I, I, I couldn't just wake up one morning and be like oh yeah gizzle whap and they're like it's a, it was nothing would ever happen <laughs> nicely put you <young> <laughs> that's funny um, and, and there's this it, it seemingly there's this pride that comes in yeah um from making a game the hard way and and there and i think there's some comments about saying that arm is an easy way out and um i think Sp- spiceware countered that in in the arguments on the forums it's like well no you still have to put a lot of work into yeah. programming this it is not it's not easy just because the processor is faster i mean easier because you have more time to do things and and, um, and I think that like I'm when I'm going to play a game, I'm going to play the story. I'm going to play the gameplay. I'm going yeah. to play the experience. And um, you know, we've played amazing games that are just the simplest thing in the world. Yeah, like I um, I, can't, I can't name any at the top of my head, yeah. but there were some really really simple one on one games that are just like no, we could play this a long time. I mean, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, I gave uh, the examples of um, this is Amoeba a, Jump I was and say Wall Amoeba. Jump Ninja. Both of those are four K games. Dude, Amoeba Jump is one of the best homebrew games <laughs> I've ever played. I love that game. <laughs> and, it's four um, K. It is could have been made back in nineteen seventy seven. When totally. the Atari came out, and you you love that game, you're well, playing it like crazy at our uh, gaming. And what's important night. to note is that I didn't like some of the early versions as much as I like the later versions. And as he developed that game and and came up with some different approaches, like mm. having different levels with different things. Yeah. To me, those collecting are, letters. And... Absolutely, those are the things that really enhance a game. It's not really the graphics. It's not really pushing the system. It's coming up with inventive ways to keep me wanting to play. You know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and Thrust put it in a way that we can understand. <laughs> I was stoked. Um, silent movies lost audience after talking movies arrived. Black and white movies after color movies arrived. Yes, some fans are still watching silent or black and movies, white movies, but they have died off. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, okay. That is a very good example of technology advancing and people abandoning old technology. Um, but also... Why? Why not? What is the the barrier to these people to the people that don't want to make arm games? What? Why don't they want to make arm games? What is wrong with ma using the newest technology yeah. that people do love? Um, do they not want to learn to to use the new technology? It's like great. Now you have both options. That's that's you, also you the can challenge yourself with four K games, or you can push it to the very limits and the newest technology. And I think that's. That's fun. Shouldn't shouldn't we be learning? Shouldn't like you want to use the newest cameras and the newest, yeah, you know, uh, maybe an experimental lighting technique that's never been done before, and people go, "Wow, that's really cool." And but it still comes down to story. That that film in Absolutely. color uh, or that film in three D is going to be forgotten if you don't have a good story to back it up. Just like with a game, if the game is crap but looks good. It's not going to have longevity. We, uh, oh, and we've played those games. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> we, like, wow, this looks those good, are, but Those it's are not the fun. majority, unfortunately. Because is, yeah. is, I think it's a lot easier to make something look good than it is to actually create something that will, that will play very well yeah. and, make, and, and really pull you in. I also think, too, that like with the black and white and color and all that stuff, one of the beautiful things about where we're at now in the media landscape is you have all these palettes. You, you have a wider palette to play mm -hmm. from. You know, like there's a, there's amazing movies that have been made, like even this year, that are in black and white, and it's cool that that's an option for mm -hmm. for creatives. If someone in their brain goes, "I have an idea, I really want to do this," oh shit, I can't because there's the, there's no limit. You know, that's a what? sadder place to be than yes. oh, I have an idea, and now I have the tools to do it. That's right. Um. Um, Thrust said Aardvark, which worked. <laughs> Buddhist, I don't know. If, uh, if we... <laughs> don't touch that. Don't touch that. Um, oh, man. Leave it to the chat. It's true. Aardvark was, uh, Thrust said Aardvark was brushed up to the max to counter the arm games, but that was a lot of work. The arm games changed the whole game. Yeah. And Enthusiast comment in Assembloids, why he chose to make Assembloids only using 4K. There's... There are quite many aspects of this. Of course, I could go for a 32K cart with DPC, ARM, and extra RAM. Maybe even some, something fancier after all. Then again, if I want more RAM, graphics, speed, CPU capabilities, I could as well code for a different platform, like Visual Basic or Java or something. Ooh, <laughs> don't, 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 do you know I just dropped some truth, man? Creative <laughs> Creativity requires boundaries and limitations. Very true. It's absolutely, absolutely. true. I've, I teach a class, and that's actually... My latest thesis has been creatives actually don't like freedom. The best thing yes. you do to a creative is to push them in a corner. Here's a budget. Here's a kind of mediocre camera. camera. Make it work. And they'll fucking create gold. But if you go to a creative and go, anything you want. Unlimited we'll, budget. We'll give it to you. It's going to be it's gonna, best cameras. It's going to be shit, man. It's but just... some people excel in those environments as well. Like, you know, the, the high end movie makers. Like, sometimes. Okay, sometimes. But sometimes I mean, it's it... mediocre crap and they rely on visual effects. And it's like, oh, this is a treat for my eyes, but anybody could do this with the right people. Oh, yeah. And also, <laughs> I do think that's that element of like, you you do have to look at it as a closed system of challenges and that's when it gets more exciting because i think sometimes if you have an infinite possibilities well then you'll just spend your time just jumping from place to place to yeah. place to place versus you go oh shit i gotta do this thing by thursday i got a but you know what i mean then <laughs> right. then then it stuff happens uh, he continues, the point for me is to code for the 2600, not despite its specialities, shortcomings, and restrictions, but exactly because of that. Having size limits really renders the whole experience iterative. What can I include? Is it worth it? What's the trade-off? Should I go for more graphics? Or a title pick? Or more text? Maybe if I rewrite it from scratch, another approach saves more bytes. You start to experience how early pioneers must have felt, like when Grand Prix was crammed into 4K as well, by sheer genius rather than sloppiness in the particular case of Crane. When, they, when the very same coder started to use that special DPC chip, 
He did not do that to make life easier and get the same things done as before, just simpler, but to rather than push the limits even further and then max them out again at their new spot, etc. Um, that That is a very good way to phrase why you should use that new technology, is to push the limits of your creativity using that new technology, Absolutely. not rely on it as a crutch to make things easier for yourself. It's like, oh, I'm going to use this new camera because it has uh, a wider range of uh, yeah, uh, stops. I'll, I'll share something from my world. I'll be very quick because I don't <laughs> want to bore anybody. Yes. But one of the issues we've had in, in filmmaking for a long time is shooting night scenes are extraordinarily challenging because of the yeah. limitations of cameras. And just recently, we've been able to start to film at night because of the sensitivity of, of, of the sensors to which is really exciting for people like me who are very um, devoted to realism, where I really mm. like, when I see, it used to be that when you would shoot a night scene in a, in, on a movie, you would have to imitate something, so you get these silly, like, moonlights, you would get yeah. these really strange, and people, and it was very limited, and it would take an extraordinary amount of time, and now technology is at a place where you can actually expose what in a real location that doesn't mean that you lose the artfulness because you still need to pick a location you still need to light but it's amazing yeah. that technology can support you to to see in the dark in a way that we weren't able to see before yes. and what that does is it gives um the ability to do things in a way and new find, opportunities yeah and discover beauty in places we've never seen to sort of show images of oh this is what it actually looks like at night with, rather with than with your actual eyes the shadows are right Right. everything's right it's not lit by a huge balloon is, above you the, like, one of the most groundbreaking movies of all time was collateral and the reason why collateral is so important is the first time they shot la streets with real light mm. and it was 2004 and it was this new camera and it's amazing because it actually the aesthetic the feeling of driving around in this cab with tom cruise which is awesome <laughs> but like yeah. you know it's a really interesting like shift and i think it's not this it's a good analogy for this which is just like um, I would rather see um, art created with the new tools rather than be sort of like, oh, you know. We and then, but I mean, the film versus digital thing in my world is another great analogy where I'm obviously a digital fan because, you know, otherwise I, f I couldn't do it. It wouldn't exist. Yeah. And that's something that is really brutal. I mean, at least in the, in the art form of film, it's a tragedy because you're dealing with thousands of dollars. So you have the difference of existing or not existing because of technology on an independent level versus on a professional level. They don't give a shit if you have $2 million. Same with developers, right? If developers have massive amounts of money, they're, they're not limited, but it's the people who want to create things in the garage that these tools can really change things. Yeah. What if uh, you don't need every bit? <laughs> That's a good uh, point. When when the very same coder started to use the special DC <laughs> Do we get chip. the games today? So true. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm just going to race through the rest of this because it's good comments. But we won't discuss it any further. Um, um, no, love, hate. Learn the code rather than expanding it at any new idea. One of the games I play most with my wife or non-gamer friends is your 1K cave or jammed by the way, Thomas. Uh, thanks for that. Both are perfect examples of ideal simplicity possible due to beautify, beautify code. Yeah, both are very good games in small amounts of space. Of course, limits can also crimit, cripple your game concept and ruin the game fatally. So far, I'm confident that the essence of Assembloid survives being trimmed to 4K. Once it's done, I'd love to illustrate code design decisions since this is also what fascinates me about other people's projects. Okay, so the Stella fundraiser is coming up. Wow. Uh, July 12th, just two and a half weeks away. Uh, the marathon will be for 12 hours, July 12th, starting at 12 p.m. Pacific, going to 12 a.m. midnight. It's going to be lots, awesome, man. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be lots of fun. Lots of donations are coming in. Lots of video call-ins by developers. The whole crew is going to be here, just like the uh, award Which show. Which is rare, actually. Very rare. Um, a good, I some, spend, like... 95% of my time with James. I see Tanya and like uh, Darcy like almost so, never. So seldom. Which is gonna, so it's going to be cool to have us all in the, in the room together because yeah. it's, it's, it's quite a rare thing. Uh, high score challenges, games we're going to try and finish. and um, So you can check it out in the Atari Age forums. The fundraiser, I will post that in the chat so you guys can check that out and see what fun things we're going to be up to. And now we're going to get to the games. 
And thanks so. for the little push. It's a, it's important to remind us sometimes. Yeah, we like to chat. <laughs> it's definitely. And but. if you get us on certain topics, it's like, good luck. Yeah, exactly. then That's why it's nice. You got to keep us on track a little bit. So the first one up is Chaotic Grill. It's Ooh. a 2019 work in progress update. Uh, we have played this game a couple times, but now it's getting close. Getting close to the finish line. So let's get this going. Oh, oh we got to press the button in the middle. Got it. And hold it down. Don't hold uh, oh, the box. I'm... Because we can't see anything, so we don't know when it's coming. Yeah, it's still. There we go. Bottom one, eh? Yep. Today's date. Cool. And That's then, uh, the where is it? Chaotic Grill. Bam. Yeah. Okay, do you want me to jump in, or should we wait for... Wait for a second, because there's a new title screen. There you go. Should I go for it? Yep, go for it now. Oh, that was really quiet. We got a we got a chef here. He looks oh. like the chef from the, the the place we go get lunch sometimes. <laughs> he does. He's got the same hat and everything. I mean, it's a classic look, but so this is a thirty two k game. Let me just go back to my notes. I don't know if it is using the DPC chip or not. Oh, I'm not ooh. sure. Um, actually, let me uh, load it up here because that is a very important question, oh. isn't it? Uh, today, anyway. It's the topic of the day. Yep. Oh my god. Pull is closed. That's cool about your flash card, man. I'm excited to nope, see. I'm, ex I'm excited to find out if that how that works for yeah. you. Yeah. Um I will probably have it going pretty soon. Yeah, this is using DPC chip, is thirty two K game. You gotta this understand James's house is so streamlined. I don't I don't <laughs> even know how to there's like everything is like so efficient in the uh, in the, that's the appearance of it anyway. That's how it feels. That compared to my house, is there's an efficiency that's <laughs> I still plug my my printer in with a USB. That that's you oh, know, so. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's old school. That's the thing. <laughs> um so this is from uh May fifth. He 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 didn't post it in May 5th, but I think he wanted to do an update um, to it. Uh, let me try and get the right page. So you can jump right into it. Okay. Oh, Splendid Nut said, uh, who, who is the okay, programmer? I... No arm code except the DPC Plus okay, driver. I'm, I'm very <laughs> confused so as to like what to do at the moment. Okay. Oh, there's no sound. What is happening? Is that what I got to do? I got to crush these guys, man? Uh -oh. I got to get this. You're going to cut out for a second. It's okay. I already died. Okay, I think i got to like throw stuff on these people. You haven't played this game? No, no. Oh, perfect. Then it'll be a whole new experience. Bam. See? Oh, death, right? Okay, good. But i got to like... Ah! There we go. Now we have sound. Yeah. I think Holy it went a little nuts cow. before the show, but it's all good now. I know how to fix it when it gets crazy. Uh oh, I just really don't understand what's going on. Um, that's okay. <laughs> you figure it out. I will I read ate the some, updates. I ate some ice cream. Well, so that's, that's something some... you should be doing uh, in this game. And I'm just killing these guys. I feel like that's probably like on the agenda. Yeah. I can kind of like do some interesting attack. It appears. Yeah, it's pepper attack, which stuns them. Uh oh. You only have limited amounts of the pepper. Okay. Um, what you're doing is making burgers. So those are the different layers of the burgers. Oh, shit. So you have to walk across them to drop it. Okay. Now, you can kill or stun those guys by dropping the burger pieces on them. Or like that. Do it, do it, no! do it. No, you didn't get all the way across. Oh, I didn't understand. Normally, I just stand in the middle and it does it. Oh, no, no. You okay. have to walk all the way across. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. There we go. That could have. That would have been a killer move. Last. Yeah, that would have been you got it would have got two at a time. No luck. Oh, pepper. Oh, you how? That was very lucky. That was, shouldn't have happened. I would actually. describe that as buggy. Even yes, that should really. not have happened. You should have hit him. I should have died. Because I don't think that's a possibility it to turns drop me the burger. Into Leo from the Revenant. <laughs> should have died. Should have been killed by. So let me read what the updates are for everyone here. Oh, 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 it's okay, I'm just kind of running around, just making burgers. Uh, it's been a while, so been busy taking a break. So I'll give an update. Fixed most or all of the occurrences of the enemies walking on the screen. Bad layout data. 
New scoreboard, 96 pixels wide. Very nice at the top. Um, new scoreboard font. No, now oh, I to, can't move. Now to, uh, thanks to a Nostalgia 37. Uh, fixed issue where the pepper button is held down during gameplay. You won't accidentally use all your peppers now. Improved enemy that. burger collision detection so that they no, should no longer get squashed that's instead a, of riding the burger. That's a great sentence. Improved. Burger <laughs> enemy collision. burger collision? Yeah! Yep, Who is, hasn't been there? That's a new sentence. There's a whole, there's a subreddit called uh, Brand New Sentence. Uh oh, see. You have six peppers. Oh, I can, but that was like, they were like both coming. I don't know if you can shoot it upwards, but I think so. Okay. No, you should have shot at the one. Uh oh. Uh oh. And then passed by him. I would say my tactics are infantile, <laughs> but my heart is in the right place. Yes! See, I finally killed some people. Uh, fixed positions of bonus items. I've, oh. He says, if I almost got the new flicker management so done, I feel like maybe there, are still some, yes. there are still some issues, especially when items are displayed that need to be worked out, so it's not enabled. Enjoy. Okay, so this is a classic arcade game. Okay. Burger time. Been ported to everything. Oh, including on, the Atari 2600. Oh. oh, you missed all of them! Oh. I did, I was trying my best. Yeah. This guy's not exactly a fast-moving cook, <laughs> but he He's tries. faster than the enemies. Oh, at this point, anyway. Um, so I feel like I just gotta, like... I would say the uh, precision that you need to get on and off the ladders may need a little bit more room. Um, latitude, so that it's not as... <clears throat> Hard, but you're doing okay, actually. Ah, uh, see. You went the wrong way. Shake it up. I just, yeah. It's, but, it, but I wouldn't say it's easy to adjust with this guy. Like it kind of, like <laughs> you know, he's a little. He takes his time. Okay. I'm excited so, to see how this game's played. The best way to do it is to go right up to the top. The top. That makes a lot of sense. Because then it has a cascading effect. Whoa. To all the burgers. Watch this. You can oh, catch them. Shit. When make them ride them, ride it down all the way. My God. Okay, those guys are gonna come up. So let's do this. What a what a oh what a bad better decision, what guys. A, there you go. What Squish. a what a better tactic than mine. <laughs> Now, I have noticed some screen jumping when burgers are falling. It feels like... Oh, there we go. That's the pepper. So you just yep. fucking throw it in their you face. just throw it in their face and they're like... like <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, guys. Make the decision. Come over here. Yes. That's what I need. This game's a bit easier when you know how to play it. A little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you can throw it down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was using none of these <laughs> tactics. Well, you get to learn. A little bit. Whoa! Uh, sure. Well, I can get these guys. I bet you'll be able to get them. Uh, at least a couple there. And so basically, you just need to make your burger. Yeah, you're, you're just making burgers. That's what you're doing. It's like a summer job, you know? Yep. But the, uh, the flicker handling is really good. Um, you can see all the guys. Um, uh, Dinoid says, I really like this game. The music is a bit repetitive, though. A little bit. And he said, is this uh, uh, coming out on cart? I mean, oh, this... oh, yes, it will be. I'm and very it's... sure somebody will want to put this on cart. Dude, this is amazing. All that work for four burgers. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, different style level. Yeah, it, and there's an egg guy now. I oh, don't think what's... the egg guy was there before. I don't know if it makes any... Makes any difference? Like, there's tactics? I'm not sure. I'm not an expert at burger time or the, the the way things move. Makes sense, though, going to the top. Yeah, because then you don't have to do as many moves to make the burger. Yeah, it's just a lot simpler. Bam, bam, holy shit. I mean, sometimes. And then you can collect those for bosses. Whoa. And you can you kind of draw the burger ain't out. easy though. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what a hard job, is, man. Burger and ain't easy, especially when you're being attacked by enemies who just want to stop you. This is some high stakes burger making, man. Because oh, normally there's some, there's some jumping up the screen. It's only when the burgers are falling, so that's something to look into. 
Because normally it isn't the end of the world if you don't make a burger order, but oh, in this case you're true. getting attacked by oh. like Pac-Man style <laughs> characters, it feels like. Yeah, you're kind of in a maze, like a, a maze on its side. It feels very, it feels like a riff on Pac-Man to some degree. Although oh, you so many games were. Although so you can't, like, games. there's no pills to eat. And... There's no power-ups, but you do get a, a, a weapon, offensive weapon, uh, which is your pepper. Yeah. Which is pretty good because you can use it anytime you want. Which is an amazing weapon, by the way. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Like, going for it. And that's how you can kind of get rid of the characters for a while. A little bit, yeah. And is that coffee? No, that's yep. a milkshake? No, it's coffee time. Coffee. Oh, oh it's coffee. no. And the mazes get harder and harder. Makes sense, man. That's kind of the way it should go. Yeah, Whoa. one more. Oh, James. Let's take him for a ride. There we go. That's what you get. Burger and Annie's. <laughs> yeah, at Kev. At some point, it'll come out in carts. Several people have asked about that, oh, I bet. It is an amazing... So was this an arcade game initially? Yes. Um, this feels like arcade to me. Yes, it was a very successful arcade game. It almost looks a little like Donkey Kong to some degree. It's got the ladders, yep. Um, so it's got a lot of aspects of I feel like Donkey the Kong. Fries, well, things are coming after be, uh, you in this. something, you know. Like... It's got pea pepper fries. <laughs> <clears throat> there we go. I don't know how you did that that one time, where you oh, ro was... you rent went ran into him. So I would look at that splendid nut. Um, it's because I'm so good at these games. Somehow <laughs> you did that. I have no idea how. <laughs> oh. Damn it! Oh, no. Wrong way. It's Put hard. The pepper man. the wrong way. By the, oh, Dianoid says, by the way, I just discovered the music's the same as the arcade. Repetitive. I don't I don't mind it. I think maybe when you're playing it, it feels a bit different. But I do know what you mean. It's, it's, it's... Oh, it's very short tune. Very short. I also think, too, that, like, it's a lot of higher tones, which uh, typically, you know... Get in your ear. Yeah. <laughs> There's oh, psychoacoustics, man. Oh yeah, you it's gotta think real, about it's that. It's a real thing where we hear higher frequencies. And a louder pitch. For sure. Versus lower frequencies are a little more pleasing because they're softer. Yeah. We're basically designed to hear like the sounds of babies crying. Yeah, that is the number one. <laughs> this is basically what we're designed for. And um, our hearing changes at night um, because we are listening for predators. Notice that you're hearing kind of you have to turn down sounds, you have to turn down the TV, it's a little loud, it seems. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like being buried. So now the maze. I find this one not too bad. Because this, uh. It's sentences blocks. like that that make marriage scary for me. <laughs> I've seen too many, like, you know, too many sitcoms as yeah, well. Yeah, those are not good representations, it's I don't marriage, think. Marriage, no. Oh, 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 yeah. Makes me think as a creative, I should get married just to get some material. You know? <laughs> seems Maybe if like you're a comedian. Seems that's like a married people have fodder. great, you know, like great material. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Whoa, whoa, dude, that was like some major peppering. <laughs> some serious peppering. The uh, the graphics in this game are are really really good because he's able to use the play field to draw the burgers. He's crushing this game, man! Holy cow! I played it a bit. It's fun. <laughs> wow, yeah, you know it's what an amazing you know game. what you're doing. Crush, crush, which is really good. It helps when you try and demo games. <laughs> yeah. People have complained before when I'm terrible at games. I think the first time I played Mappy, they're like, "You're terrible. Yeah. You're so bad at this game. Why are you playing it? Why don't you practice first? It's like, well, it's tough some games. I can't be awesome at every game. No, guys. definitely not. And it's also tough because if it's your favorite game, chances are you. Cool rock at it and you know yeah you're gonna look at somebody else playing it and go come on but it, why are you so terrible but i know there's games i've <laughs> sunk like hundreds of hours into and then you yes. watch somebody try to play it and it's just so painful frustrating yeah um you can you can really manipulate the the guys coming after you because they pretty much take a beeline they go right after you and if you stay in a certain position um, they will 
they you can direct them in one way or the other. But right now I'm just trying to finish things up. It makes sense, you're getting you're getting radical, you know. <laughs> See who's down there. I'm gonna have to draw them over here. Smart. Up, stay up. No. See, they See stay up. If they, if they stay up. There's no up, time limit, so it doesn't really yeah, matter. That's, that's a good thing. It's like nine of them, it feels like. <laughs> I mean, it isn't, but that is how it feels. Let's get these guys. Yes. Yeah, get some bonus there. Dude, these burgers are getting pretty stacked. I mean, those are this pretty is, crazy this burgers. Is like, you know, at AW, they have like the grandpa burger and like the papa oh, burger. On. This is a friggin' like, we it's we're in like a great grandpa burger territory. Oh, it was yeah. like five patties at this point. Now, this level is challenging. Yeah, this is, seems to be like the mechanics There's are. Not a lot of room to move around. Yeah, far more tactical, it appears. And you kind of got to rinse and repeat this stuff, too, right? Because you got to go up there and get those top ones, and you're yeah. going to be doing this. Over and over and over. You do have to do it from the top. No matter what you're doing below, those top ones have to be done. <laughs> Thrust is like, I feel that way watching YouTubers playing Thrust. I can only imagine. I'm oh, sure that's that. the case, man. Yeah, no cheese on these burgers. They're very... Yeah, very plain kind of burgers, but yeah, that's what the arcade was, I guess. They could have made I know cheese. That, I, just... I know that you're a vegan. Yes. But what's your favorite burger? What, what do you mean? Like, like, what's on it? What's your favorite like place to eat burgers, or like, is there a good, you know, what? How do you... Oh, meat. Yeah. Meat is meat is definitely. Oh, actually, no, that's second. There is a uh, food truck that is. Uh, near the roundhouse yeah um in vancouver near yale town um it is run by a cult a cult a literal cult whoa <laughs> but goddamn it's those cult. good birds <laughs> but goddamn they are good oh i'm gonna have to use pepper yeah it's okay um yeah they're run by the loving hut i don't remember the name of the cult but people can look it up um the yeah. cult could basically supreme... just be called the loving cult. <laughs> yeah, the the cult is run by the Supreme Master Chi. Supreme Master Chi. Hold on, the Supreme Master Chi? Yeah, oh, is... so... I it... didn't expect this question would be such dynamite. <laughs> I know, it's I a good question. I never knew. Actually, those guys can't turn around, so you can oh, use that to your advantage. Um, and if you go to their restaurants, they have a TV playing with her propaganda on it. Oh. All the time. <laughs> That's how they get you, man. Um, and she's like all dressed in white, and it's like a movie, a video from the 80s. And As it's... you do, man, if you're a cult leader. Oh, yeah, it can't be new footage. Always has to be old footage. Um, so, yeah, there's a food truck, which has, usually the restaurants are all, um, Asian food, Chinese food, I think, um, but they're, or they're like tacos, too, sometimes. Oh my god, I'm using up the pepper like crazy. Oh no. Only got one left. Get that pepper. Okay. Oh, that, you got oh, two. Oh, you get more when you get the middle thing. Yeah. Well, it changes something. everything. It does change everything. I'm going to yeah. be going for that more. And this now. one does have cheese. This is what? Azure. Just let us know. Oh. You do a taco version stuff? of Burger Time. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I'm dead. That's okay. You die. still got quite a few <laughs> lives, man. That's true. Um, anyway, the food truck um, has burgers, which the restaurant does not have burgers. It's not a burger place. Oh, this level is very hard. Yeah, this is next level. Next level level? <laughs> next level challenge, for <laughs> sure. Oh, it just feels like it's... A, it's it's very separated, like all the well, things... Well, the issue is, is because there's nowhere to go, you kind of have to, like... Um, you kind of have to like send the thing and then go like you have yes. to be much more strategic because in the other one you could just kind of run in loops yes which made a, which there's was many escapes which this was one there's like a lot easier i'm out of birth i'm out of pepper. yeah i think this is my demise this level you really got to plan this one It's, yeah, this is a hard this one. This is a man. hard level. 
There's always one level that just kind of like spikes the challenge, you know? Yeah. And eventually all the, the bad guys group up. Like they, they team up. They all get a yeah. few guys there. Because this is the issue, right? It's fairly <laughs> relentless. <laughs> Taco time. Taco time, indeed. So Should we pop over to the other game? Because yep. we do have five to do. So amazing update. Amazing game. Um, the only issues I see is some jumping. A little bit of screen jumping when uh, the burgers are falling down. Um, and it's very consistent. So you'll be able to easily uh, see that. Other than that, I, I don't see any looks good playability man. issues i don't know about uh how accurate it is to the arcade but everything's moving really really well oh it's well so now. good yeah so let's move on to the next one and i'll turn that off and on again you ready got it got our little thing uh, uh, so the next oh, game yeah. is flappo bird flappo bird and cool. the results of our well, uh, is... poll is uh uh -oh. A tie Our between. Thing is a little bit. Yeah, up is not great on it. Okay, we're we're it getting we're back. Um, the tie between number two and number three. Uh, no, I love box copies. And DRM is of the devil. So only eleven percent of people wanted yes. They thought that was a, yes. a good option. It is, seemed pretty unanimous. The wrongs. Uh... Yeah. So, but I, I can see some people wanting that. It's cheaper. It's faster. Some people don't care about longevity. Some people go, uh, it'll be pirated anyway. That's a good point. Most games do get pirated because there are, thankfully, preservationists out there that um, do hack these games and pull them off of PS4 and and systems that have, have the ROMs only available um, to download. But not all games get that treatment. No. Um, some are like not so popular, but somebody might like it. So this yeah, uh, time kind of erodes away a lot of stuff. Which yeah, is, things are lost to history. Which is like there's that philosophy that only the the cream rises up. I yeah. don't know if that's true. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. the most popular things rise to the top over time. Mm -hmm. You know. So I am really looking. F yes, I suppose it says chaotic grill is so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this being uh, chaotic grill being finished and put out for release. The next game is a little bit of uh, a <laughs> little bit controversial. Ooh. In the fact that some people complained bitterly about it Ooh. when it was released. So because... that's kind of why I included it. Okay, should we So this is a good example of those people saying you can get lazy for making making games. Um, this is not a DPC game though. This is not using using the chip or anyway. Uh, so this is uh, Flapple Bird by Thomas Hopper, a.k.a. TACS Games. So you can jump in. Have we it. played anything um, by, by, by that game? This, this guy? No. No. Okay. This is his only Atari 2600 game. He's made another, uh, a bunch of other games for other consoles and systems. So you can get right into it. You'll figure out right away what this game is. Oh, instant death. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, oh, I think so it's got it. You got, from the name, you probably figured it out a bit. Oh, wow, you cleared that much faster than I ever did. Oh. <laughs> the first challenge. Holy shit. Um, so this was put out February 8th, 2014. Oh, oh, it's 4K. Um, so the notes from the, from the programmer. In attempt to jump on the bird-flapping bandwagon while we'll remain totally and hopelessly out of touch, TACS Games has released its latest game, Flappo Bird. I spent some time today making I spent some time today making a new and original game called Flappo Bird for Atari 2600. You can download it right now for from here and pay what you want. Pay what you want. <laughs> zero, a, dollars. zero dollars. No, I, I, I've, <laughs> that's, I've that's, wanted to make something for the 2600 for a while now, and when I had this totally original idea yesterday. Because who wants to pay? That's the thing. <laughs> Ooh, you made it to level three. Yeah. Wow. I never made it there. Uh, even without ever working on a 2600 game, I was already familiar with the hardware limitations of the dice device from a few books I've read on the topic. Going in with such a simple idea uh, made build building this game very easy. It only took a couple of hours to build it once I got the tools up. I think I'll return to the 2600 one day hey, as, this was level a three. Uh, as this was a fun project to work on. Perhaps I can make a little library of weird games. Got any suggestions? So check the game out and give it a play. It's a real Atari 2600 4K is... ROM. 
so you'll need an emulator to play it, but I'm sure you'll be able to sort that out for yourself. This is Twitch Dynamite, this, this game. This uh, it is... is just you, Ground Trooper. Please refresh. Uh, we're still broadcasting. He says it stopped. Um, so it got heavy criticism in the Atari Age forums of this game. Well, I want I, I have some theories as to why, but I'd like to hear the... Before I say them... So I'm Random gonna... Terrain said, For those who don't know, this is another Atari basic game where the programmers seem to have spent hardly any time on the sound effects. You hear an annoying beep whenever you play the press the fire button. Uh... <laughs> Seems like no attempt has been made to shape the sound effects. And it, and it doesn't look like a bird. It looks... I don't know what this is. I don't know what it looks like, but it's... I feel it's more fish-like than bird-like. Yeah. Ah. It could have been an underwater game, you know? Bubbles going up. You could have put a lot more into it. Um, if sound could be compared to food, he just dumped it straight out of the can onto your plate. Are, oh. It's cold, congealed, and still shaped like the can. <laughs> Flappy bird! No delay between the title screen when you lose. Yeah, that's a problem. I think ninjas should quit playing Fortnite and just exclusively do Flappy Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Thrust says no real physics, just diagonals. Yep, straight, so straight good. diagonals. It's it's hell getting through those openings, isn't it? Oh my God, yeah. It's uh, hell. <laughs> this is like, so far I'm, I haven't made it to level four. That says that tells says a lot. So he says it only took a couple hours to build one. Th this is the developer. It only took a couple hours to build once I got the tools set up. So oh check no! Check it out, level three. He said. Oh fuck! Uh, and it shows you can get the base of a, of a game up and running in a couple hours, but at least a few days should be spent bug testing and polishing. Some people spent weeks or months. What's wrong with this? Spending a couple of hours making a first draft Batari game and asking people to give you money for it is sickening. Hold on, is people? How much is is one of these? Is well, Flappy Bird this go is for? this is pay what you want. Oh, okay, so zero. But he is asking for money. It's not zero. He's not giving it away. He's like, I made this in a couple hours. Give me money. I know that people don't have to pay to play play it, but it's still sickening to ask for money for an inferior product that you hardly spent any time on. Godzilla Joe said, and this is why I've bashed Batari Basic in the past, but I guess it's come to I've come to realize that shitty games couldn't shouldn't be play, blamed on the tools, but lazy programmers who think making one block shoot another block is a game. We got a good review from Mallard, man. Uh, ma no, it progresses too fast. After two rounds, it automatically advanced to two tubes. That's right, man. Well, oh yeah. Let me let's see if we can get to the two tubes, man. <laughs> Twitch Dynamite right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seriously, there must be 50 of them by now. Changing the colors and sprites of a My First Program sample is not a game. And it amazes me when people drop $40 for the boxed edition. For this? Games like this. You'd be surprised at, at the games that people put out and put in a box. And the box looks awesome. Beautiful. And the game is the equivalent of this. This feels like a blockbuster like, game. Do you know what simple, I mean? Like you take one it home concept. from. Oh yeah, it's like oh god. Look at I rent this. Yeah, you're, this definitely feels like something you rent, and then yeah, you're like. That's you, what they did in the '80s for VHS. Is in blockbuster that they, they they get an awesome title for the for the movie. It's like killer robots from space, and it has right. this awesome looking robot. And it's, it's and some, it's got the font of Terminator or something. And they got some, like, star from TV who, like, makes a cameo it, For two seconds, and they paid him, like, $5,000 for the day to come in for um, an hour. And you rent it, you bring it home, and it's, like, literally filmed on a VHSC uh, camera. <laughs> it's just... And it's terrible, and it's, like, 72 minutes long. Just enough. Uh, compared to something like Endless Snow, that had something some thought behind it and i think we played that game uh it broke it broke my no more paying for batari basic rule for that one maybe i'm missing out here could make a few bucks on the side so he's theorizing like i could uh, cash in on this batari basic craze it's not um, a good attitude so this is from games. an article in pocketgamer.biz from the developer thomas hopper was interviewed for 
There's no approval process for access to development tools so anybody can make uh, get to making games on PSN. He's talking about PlayStation Mobile, which he mostly programs for. That's the beauty, though, of, of I wouldn't want to take that away. That's the cool Wild West aspect. But he is taking advantage of it. Ooh, it's true. So my, for my first couple of games on PSM, there is very little involvement from Sony. The system is automated all the way up to the game approval process. This is a tricky subject. While it's true that there are some really great titles on PSM, it's also true that there are very some low-quality low games on there, too. I've spoken with my fellow PSM developers who think there should be a limp, minimum threshold for quality. He continues, but I don't agree with them. So he has taken, he has brought over his philosophy from making PlayStation Mobile games to Atari 2600 games. Oh, so almost got to level. So level, level two has two pipes. So, so check this out. I'll try to sort of get us there. No. Oh, you only get one point. Oh, you get it after you go through. Yeah. So it's like it's. I mean, it's actually fairly hard to like consistently play this game because it's like little, tiny little pumps was the key. You see that? Oh yes, yes. But oh. still, it's hard, right? Because okay. it gets smaller. You, you flabby, burn it up. See. See how many times I die. It takes a few. One. It takes yeah. See the tiny little ones. There you go. Ugh. Ugh. This is painful. This to me, the reason why I like this warms my heart is there's so many flash games that were like this. Like when I was a, oh. a teenager, um, like really like 13. Ugh. Um, we would just like hang out in the library and play like flash games all the time. Because right, because they were online, right? Yeah, and they would be really simple games like this. Ah! And so you would, so you would go to your friend. It'd be like a helicopter or like you know, like, or, or, uh, yeah. or like a worm or something. Like so, I've played lots of games like this. Although typically this is, I think the what makes this one hard is that it's really sensitive. Like you, you know what I mean. You you barely tap There's it. So much gravity too. Well, yeah, and you move so quickly that it's like. You move almost the full extent of the opening. Yeah, so, and it, you, it is almost like you have to slingshot yourself. So this is the farthest I've ever made. I haven't made it past this level. Ah! Did you make it through the first pipe? Yeah. yeah. On that level? Yeah. So you've made, we've both made it as far as we can. And that is not good. Like, the opening should be as big as the opening on the third level here. Like, to begin with, they should be that big. You know, the wider one. Yeah, Mal is like maybe three lives. Yeah, so that, maybe that would help. Maybe power-ups, dude, I think we could, you know... I think we should just write off this game. There's no effort. Like, Well, the thing is, is that it isn't... Um, uh, <laughs> this is a flappy bird, man. <laughs> uh, it's terrible. It's really, really terrible, and I totally agree with them. Like, no effort was put into this. <clears throat> and it's fine. If you're going, like somebody said, put it out. <gasps> oh, oh. Ah, oh, oh, see. The, put it out in the, the forum. Dream. Say, I, hey, I made this game. What should I do to improve it? And of course, they would say, better physics. They would say anything. Any, no. a not so big of a jump the alterations. More, make make it scalable so that you feel like you can get past like the first The openings level. are bigger, so they're like that size to begin with. Yeah. So you get a feel for the bird, so you're not just thrown into it. Um, lots of things could be done, but no, he, he said, this is, this is awesome. Give me money for this, this effort. That That's hilarious. He took literally two hours to make. This is the evil stepbrother of Cave 1K. Okay, we've tortured people enough. Okay, I got, hold on. I'm so close to... Okay. No, that's it. That's it. Okay, first one. Hold on. I got it. Uh, sorry, Alex. So cool. we're going to switch over to oh, that one that a little bit of effort has actually been put into it. Called Flappy? Flappy. And this is made by our own Ice Bosta. Fucking Ice Bosta, man. Mallard Game says Link. You want a Link for that game? <laughs> yes. Just look it up. <laughs> Flappo look, Bird. Flappo Bird. It's Nobody else has named their game Flappo Bird, so I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, so this is Flappy. By Maybe my there are only five levels. You you could you you could be right, Thrust Man. We maybe have been that close to finishing the whole game. Because why would he? Is was the original was the programmer that good that he could get it past that? How would he ever test level six? That'd be amazing. Right? That'd be amazing. You like finally finish level five after like months it's of like. like Doo -doo, you win. It wouldn't even be that. You would like hit past the the thing and be like, you win. Because everything in this game, because you'd be so trigger happy. 
A Mallard Games. How do I feature my game on the stream? Well, um, a good way is to put it in the Atari Age forums. Um, put it out there for people to take a look at it. Um, and I will see it on there as well. Um, I, I usually look at, present the game on the stream when it's at a certain point in its in development, where it's playable, there's something to comment on. If it's in work in progress, uh, we will give suggestions as yeah, it man. goes on. And then usually, it depends how, how, how in, uh, intricate the game is. We may play it usually once more, at least, when it's done or near done. And if there's a lot to it and a lot of development going on, maybe a couple times in between before that's done. But we don't want to play it too early. Um, so you could also send it to me uh, directly in the Atari Age forums and I can check it out. But make sure it's at a point where it's showable to people. Like there's something to play. Because if it's just like, oh, I've got the movement down for one character. It's not, it's not going to be very interesting to look at for people, and we won't be able to play it for two seconds. So it has to be to a certain point where there's maybe score. Like, you can progress in the game, multiple screens, things are happening in it. Okay, this is uh, by Michael Haas, a.k.a. Esposto, who's hey, in buddy. the chat. I'm so stoked. This was first put out in 2014, February 16th, and he made this build today for me. I supposed to thanks, dude. Because he had a sample in the game before of uh, Homer Simpson going dope, but it blanked out the screen and made it go crazy, right? To to dedicate all its time to the, to the sample. So he replaced it with just a very simple sound sample when you die, so we can show it. And this is a 4K game. Uh, other games by uh, I supposed to to that 2600 Christmas 2012 Astro Blaster DK Arcade 2600. Flappy, food pi food fight proof of concept, Cubert mock up, Satan's Hollow proof of concept, stunt cycle, Tempest mock up, and a bunch of hacks and tons of music and sound contributions to games, including Mappy, Draconian, and Wizard of War. His resume is huge. He is the sound guy. If you want sound for your game, uh, he is the guy to and he's do an it. Old friend of the show. <laughs> oh yeah, since the beginning. So you can get this in the Atari Age store, not this version of it, but. <clears throat> Hopefully he'll upload this one. So you can go for it. It's another Flappy Bird. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. How do I... You flap with the button. Flap, 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 flap. Oh, I see. Ah, I Very see. different from that trash that we played. <clears throat> if you thought flying to nowhere was hard, now they've placed perilous pipes in your path. In Flappy, your challenge is to attend to your avian alley ally at an altitude avoiding alloy aerial aqueducts. Thank you, I suppose, to, for the alliteration. Uh, how far will you fare? Oh my god. The pain continues. Flappy is an Atari 2600 take on the See, popular... this is how you scale a game, friends. Yes. It's the same. Oh, it's cool. We get the whole range or something. Uh, Flappy is an Atari 2600 take on the popular and somewhat infamous at, the, is, at this point Flappy Bird game that first appeared on the iPhone. The game was unceremoniously removed from the App Store by its author, resulting in a large number of copycat Is that games. the one we just played? No. No, no. It's an iPhone. iPhone game. Uh, released to capitalize on the sudden vacuum of the game's disappearance. You can read more about Flappy Bird's history over on Wikipedia. You can also read about the 2600 version of Flappy in the Atari Age forums. Like its iOS brethren, Flappy is a very simple game. Pressing the joystick button causes your avian friend to flap. The more you flap, the higher you climb. Your primary goal, and really your only goal, is to line up your bird so it passes through die. the oncoming pipe. If you run into the pipe, it's game over. If you hold down the button, you can glide for a moment before falling. Between no. flapping and gliding, 17. that's the limit of your controls. Oh, it doesn't have your high score. That's okay. What did you make? 17, I think. No, no, no. You made it like 20 or 30. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was so focused on staying alive. But... How high can you score? Will you play it just one more time? To see if you can beat your previous best. Reminds me of the birds from Joust. Yes, very reminiscent of that. And also the sound, too. Very reminiscent of the Joust. It's very loud. Sorry, guys. Getting in your ear hole. Sorry, friends. 
But every game's volume is totally different, so. That's part of the issue. And we don't have a sound person on the board. We, we have, we're not making enough money to no. hire a sound engineer for us yet. Just Jamie? No. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, where is he? <laughs> where is Get Jamie? Get in here. He's fired. That guy. So it speeds up at 10, 20, 30 every 10? Uh, that sounds about right. Um, it sort of starts to pick up. A oh, bit. I suppose I broke the high score subroutine by taking out the, uh, okay. the sample. He must take, take it out Oh, I probably much. did higher than 17, because I'm at 17 now. Oh, yeah, you, you were up in the 30s. What I was reading out. 30s uh, or 40s. Oh, oh see, there it is. I just okay. think the last one. Now it's working. It's hard to go up. It's easy to go down. Which is good, so you should stay up more than down. So That's always correct. prime yourself for you, the next pipe, yeah, so, if you can. Especially when it starts to speed up. Man, I love the little buildings going by. Yeah, like the kind of here's the... some effort was put in. You've got the clouds up above, kind of transparent clouds. You've got some low clouds. You've got some passing buildings. Well, and scales, which is so nice, right? It's it like, scales. you know, it feels like... Because it is it is so morale crushing. Yep. If the best you can do is level four. And yes. it takes two seconds to do a level. Yep. And it's got parallax it with does. the pipes and the cities, not the clouds. Oh, it does have the clouds. And this Three looks, levels of parallax. This looks like a bird rather than sort of a half the fish. <laughs> killed fish, man. <laughs> it's got designs to the pipes. It's like... Flappo Bird 4K. That's <laughs> right, man. That's right. Flappo bird, <laughs> what a, what a, there's a part of me that like, that's like on my top 10 list of games just for like ironic trolling reasons. More like Floppo bird, ha uh -huh. <laughs> It's so good. <clears throat> yeah, this, yeah, scales up quite nicely. And you feel like, and it feels like it's getting more and more intense, you know, it's like, holy I don't know if the shit. pipes, oh. Oh yeah, this was I was in the 30s. I was probably 37 then, because yeah. I saw a seven right oh, before okay. I died. See, there you go. Now you uncharted territory. Severely, yeah. This is that's 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 the issue, man, right there. <laughs> if you have like a bottom and then a top. Yeah, you got to get up. You have to, and you almost want to like push up as soon All the as whole you. Time. Yeah, like now. Fuck yep. Yeah. Whoa, that was close. This is like a wall jump ninja all over again. Oh yeah. I can make it to 100. Flappo. I don't know if it's going to get much faster. It seems to it must be. Must be a limit. So I don't think it's increasing. I don't know, man. Tetris just gets jacked. <laughs> it does. Tetris does get really jacked. It turns into like an unplayable <laughs> mess. But there's people who can do it. Yep. They just look. They have. Oh, what did I get? 60 79, I think. 79? I think okay. that was it. 78, 79. <clears throat> Yeah, I did. You did break the high score, seventy-three RC seven. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Thank man. you very much. It's hard to like. We don't have arena much. foot here today to to um, do our scores. <clears throat> I want one more turn at this. I yeah, want to make a hundred. It's a bit hard on the old fingers. <laughs> it is. It is. This one in particular because it's less. It's a lot of. It's on the other end. The other one was so sensitive, and this one could whoa, be a whoa, bit whoa. more sensitive because it's. <laughs> you see, it takes like I'm jacking this button, and I'm like for me to get up, I almost have to like you know. Hammer it. Yeah. It takes a little bit of effort. But the design is so much better. Oh, it's so much better. It's, it's a joy to play. It's a real it's game, man. Challenge for challenge's sake, not just because the game. And in is all broken. honesty, it's actually a bit easier when it starts to speed up a bit. It like, is. Like at the slowest setting, it's it's, it's in some ways harder than like because this is somewhere in between. The vertical gaps could change in size when the game is progressing. Yes. Yeah, that would make it extra hard because I think they're <laughs> about the hard. same. So at this level, it's not too hard to get in between those. Like maybe at like where I was up, it's ah, oh, oh, see, it's like twenty-three. But you gotta. But when it gets like that, like those down maneuvers, you have to just. What is he talking about when? Oh, it's fast. Oh, you can go down fast if you exactly. hold down the button. Okay. I don't think I've ever needed that. No, because you fall pretty <laughs> fall easily. Pretty oh, is that just the minimum? Yeah, there is a minimum, which he... Sh well, it makes it painful on the fingers if you have to keep pressing, but it probably a good mechanic is to not 
allow you to rest in the bottom. Not yeah. that that's relevant after you get past 20. No. You don't have time to I hear you not just chill out, man. So it's not really a concern. It's only for the first 10 levels that that would be a concern. And, I, and you max out, too, so you can't yeah. get killed at the top. Which, for a bird, why would you get killed at the top? See, this is where I wish I had a slightly different kind of button for, for right. this, because the big one's tough. You know what I mean? On your fingers? Uh, it gives a lot of room for... Like, like I think this would be easier, at least for me, on, like, a, what is it, a Genesis controller? No little, way. You know, little ones? You can just really? Because then you have to do your thumb. This. Well, then you can just do finger, but it's, an easier, but it's yeah. an easier button to hit. Because this one's so big, you have to really, like... Push, True. push it way down because I think if you played this game for like an hour it would definitely fuck uh, your finger up oh yeah yeah he, oh. said, he says it's possible uh, to go one more faster oh okay but it's past 200 auto fire I mean you can do auto fire but I don't know if it's actually going to yeah. oh it's much easier but you have to put auto fire at a rate where you can get to the top really quick. Yeah, because it's like when it gets crazy fast, man. Like let me crank out the auto fire. Let's see. But then it's hard. Then it's hard to play. So it's not an advantage. You can't use auto fire in this game, which is kind of good because there's not a rate where you can be fast enough and slow enough. Oh, he says resting more than three pi pipes um, glitches the bird and you die. Oh. So, if, so if there's pipes on the bottom, and you just fucking you just chill out for like three turns, you're gonna die. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. okay. I'm That's into good. that. I'm very that into works. that. Flappy. Flappy bird. Actually, this is just yeah. This is called Flappy, not Flappy Bird. Yeah, the um, it's quite an interesting story. The uh, original author and what happened. Yeah. He got overwhelmed with everything, like the press, the money, everything. He was just like it was too much for him, and he just just pieced out. He was gone. Really? And he's like, "This is too much for me. I can't handle this fame and this money." And he took it off the. Took it off the uh, for iPhone creating, store. For creating this style. Flap, the original Flappy Bird. For creating this. Yeah, this whole genre. And he couldn't, he couldn't I mean, hack it. I mean, this is... When did he create it? I guess. Uh, early 2010s? Well, because, like, yeah, I, I, it's certainly not, like, a new idea. Because I played games in the early 2000s that were similar, but the, the, it's certainly not the same. Like, this is its own thing. Yeah, it, it's but, but a like, one button screen pressing. But game. like helicopter is is essentially oh, yeah. the same idea. It is. There's many games before Flappy Bird, but somehow the thing with a bird flapping its wings really caught on. Well, with like the Angry public. Birds was, you know. Oh, that's totally but I mean that's. that's but what I mean is like Angry Birds is like for whatever reason we like birds. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's a bird thing. It. who the new uh, Batman is going to be. I did, but I forget. <laughs> it's Robert Pattinson. Uh, hopefully it's a good director. <laughs> and DC is hilarious. Shitting the bad. To over me, and over. <laughs> but, but, but where do you go after Ben Affleck? When Ben Affleck doesn't want to be your Batman? <laughs> yeah. I, it feels to me like a boardroom of people. We're all chilling out and they're trying to figure it out. And one guy just Get like... Get nobody. Get one, nobody. One guy in the background just goes like... We should get the Twilight Boy. And everybody laughs. And then the next and then, day... And they go, no, I'm serious. We the, should get the Twilight Boy. Yeah, and the next day they're just like, uh, you know, Steve has a point. Like, it'll <laughs> bring in an audience. And like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's happening, Mr. Mr. Pattinson. Because oh, it, it will bring in an, a, a, an, will. an audience, but... Certain demographic, yeah. But it's but just... I mean, it, 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 it feels like flapping in the wind. 
does. It's just like it's They've given up. But but man, those I, I, those movies aren't for me anymore. That's just no. the, that's just the truth. I'm too old for it. You know, like like I like going to the theater. I love it, but it's not. They're not for me. And um, Endgame was the end. I think for me, it's like it's not gonna get better than this. Right. You know, it's not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna spend. You know, a decade with Robert Downey Jr. culminating. <laughs> in, like it's just not gonna happen again. So. I, I I just can't see those um, big whoa, 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 whoa. Um, films with so many characters in it. There's no story. It's all it's just too much. It's well, it's cool if you've gone on the journey because you're sort of invested in these characters. It's true. Well, it's like watching the last season of your favorite show, even though it's crappy, but you have to watch it anyway well it is almost, it is like the truest form of a comic book you know where it's like this this ongoing story but but i don't think that but then all the people that you sort of invest in die and you're like oh <laughs> right then it's over you don't feel like well doing yeah it all over and again for 20 years yeah and then it's meant to be sort of for the younger people but i think it's hilarious that friggin robert pattinson is batman like oh, i yeah. can't think of a crazy whatever that choice. was 180 there we go. Yeah, 180. <sighs> a bit like a decathlon. It is this one. A lot of button pressing. 188. Fucking good I'm work, happy with man. That. Yeah. I I can retire flappy. Oh my god, how's your finger doing? It's fine actually. Totally fine. Uh so let's go on to the fourth game here. Oh my god. You can't win. Oh. And this one is interesting we're, as well. Oh, we're winning. Press the button. Nobody tells me what I can't do. Press the button. Okay, you can't win. Okay, so since twenty eleven, should I put it up? Yep, yep. We'll we're we're in it because I have no instructions for this game. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, now this was labeled as Chris Reed making this game, who is known as Atari Twenty Six Hundred Land, and it was just found in a compilation of games on a, in a zip. In a zip uh, zip file, I believe. That's amazing. Um, so I reached out to Chris Reed, Atari Twenty Six Hundred Land, and he said it doesn't look like a game I made. <laughs> he made a billion games, um, but a billion simple, simple, simple games. So that means I have no idea who made this game, and there's no instructions. Um, so the mystery deepens. Like who who made this game? Who, who's the author of this game? I searched multiple times on Google and Atari Age for anything. Okay, I've but, made an observation, um, James. Yes? That if you just hang out on the side... You're safe? Not for long, <laughs> but I'm certainly doing better than I've ever done before. Yeah. See? Hey... I think I think I, <laughs> I think I got the closest you can to winning, you can't win. Well, Did you see you, that? Like I literally like hung that out. That might have been random, but it may not have been. Maybe it'll disappear this in time. In general, it appears as though it drops more in the middle than the sides. It's it's reminiscent. Do you have of to those, collect these these things. I don't it's it's kind of reminiscent of those those new games where they are literally so goddamn Whoa, hard. Whoa, dude! Did you see that? Yeah, I know how to play this game. It's top to bottom. <laughs> really? Because. Um, because it had that title. <laughs> That's why you're playing it first, and I'm not telling you how to play it at all. I gotta get some some snow. Give me some snow. But uh, you can't win is such an, a common phrase that I could not find any information on this. There's need, so many I need hits. Some snowflakes, man. I just died. But it went to zero. So is that winning? I don't know. Is, is losing falling through the ice? Yes, definitely. Is or hanging the snow. Um, I want another one. But if you don't get that snowflake, you, you definitely will die. You will die because it the the pieces will run out yes. before before that. I think it's an interesting mechanic they've got going here. But once you build up to three or even two, it goes to zero and the game resets. I don't think it disappears quick enough. Like, you can't even die if you wanted to at this point, right? Uh, yeah, it seems like. There, you win. So, I'll show you another there's, mechanic there's that some is other stuff. a bit of an issue. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. What is happening? Holy How shit. How did I do it before? If you do it just right, you can fly. 
all the way up to the top of the screen. Oh, you have to press to the left or right. <laughs> I didn't realize that Robert Downey Jr. took over and That's right. started... Uh, He's sparkling. Started flying. <laughs> Holy. So you can get to zero by doing this as well. So the you can't win... <laughs> very is, work in progress, is, man. Is very far from the truth. Though. Should have named I can't program. Yeah, very work in progress. But I do really like the mechanics the basic mechanics of it of things disappearing snowflakes falling you can yep. fly i don't know about the flying part <laughs> I, I think that's a mistake i think so i think that's like oh he didn't check because if you only press the button when you're on the ground you can't you can't do it you can't really do it. well you can okay that is a mistake he didn't check for that he assumed the person assumed people only press the button once because it's like, oh, jump. Oh, he wants to jump again. Oh, he wants to jump again. Oh, he wants to jump again without first hitting the ground. Yeah. There needs to be a um, a ground That's check. amazing. You can just fly. <laughs> so good. And there's only three snowflakes that come down. Now, I can't die if I want. Oh, this you is, can. Oh, you can is, do that uh, little. Appealing to my millennial snowflake right here. <laughs> this That's is right. what this is doing. So I've yeah, always wanted to collect snowflakes and fly <laughs> <laughs> in a game that can't be won. Yeah. Feels like the game of my generation. RC70. Yes. I uh, private messaged on the Atari age forums, Chris Reed, Atari 2600 land. And he said, it doesn't look like, what was his exact quote? Oh yeah. It doesn't fly. look like something I made, which may be his, his mind is failing him. Um, he doesn't think it's his game. That's what he said. How do you fly? I think man? it is his game, but um, you like it. It seems like one of his games that he would make, like very, very, very simple. He's just playing with a mechanic. Well, I can't seem to get it to fly in the same way you can. You have to press, 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 press. Oh, there we go. And to the sides. You just have to hold it longer. <laughs> oh, it's not as easy as it looks, friends. <laughs> I make it look easy. Yeah, Thrust says, feels like a Chris Reed game. I, I agree. I think he did do it, and he just forgot. But he said he it doesn't look like something. He doesn't think I it's mean, his it, game. I mean, would you want to be like... <laughs> this <laughs> proud is, of this? this is my, I I, I, proud is the wrong thing. I mean, it's, mean. it's just like, if you if you had a, kind of an experiment that maybe didn't work out, Yes. I don't know if I'd want to... He's made tons, like hundreds, I think, games. And some of them are really cool mechanics. Guys, I got Most it. Some are very simple. I can fly. You can fly. Do you ever play the? Do you ever see the movie The Rocketeer? Yes, I did. Yeah, cool. I thought it was good for the time. Very good for the yeah. time. Okay, we're done. This. That's game. the director of Captain America, the first one. Oh, really? Same director. I think we've exhausted this one. Press the button. Got it. Okay, next oh, one oh, is oh, a lot more involved. Very interesting. Caverns. Game. Caverns. Ooh. Very hard. <laughs> Didn't want to admit it. I, this is my feeling too. Dan, I think so. ABC. so. That's kind. Of, I got the same opinion. Uh, a bin. Yes, the bin. Definitely not the PDF. Whoa. Okay, you can try and figure this out. Holy. While I read yeah. about it. This caverns by Harold. Uh, Rings. The Heeson. The Heeson. The Heeson? The Jeeson. Not very good with. Um, okay. Scandinavian. Let's names. not. Sh let's not run into the wall. So apparently. this was first posted May thirty first, two thousand nineteen. It's pretty new. Um, this build is from the same. He's, he said it's done. He just posted it and it's done. No work in progress. Um, and you'd be very interested to know this is only a two K game. Wow. I am amazed. This is only a two K game actually. This is very, very amazing for 2K. I don't know how he did it, actually. This is really cool, man. Holy uh, this is the only oh, Atari game he's ever made. Um, you can download this from the Atari Age forum. He posted on May 31st. This is my first Atari 2600 homebrew game. No, I want to be... Crash it? Yeah, I did. Oh. Uh, it's an original game attempting to be a typical Atari 2600 shooter, but with simple graphics, but interesting gameplay. Navigating the caverns may be a bit weird at first, but when you play for a while, it'll make sense. Hope you like it. And we'll go to the actual instructions of it. Hello, pilot. No. Bad news. 
Last week, our scanners detected activity under the surface of, surface of the planet Venlo. We immediately sent out a scouting mission to the caverns of the planet. I expected the activity to be hostile, but not very dangerous. Oh, the uh, webcam's crazy. I'll leave it like that. Whoa. Pix cat attack. Dude, Pixel's just attacking the screen. He yeah, likes the like, cavern. Whoa. Likes oh, caverns. It's just a dumb... Sometimes it resets, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, distract you from the game. Come here. Um, I expect the activity to be hostile, but not very dangerous. We have seen them before. Oh, okay. I'm just, like, failing so hard today, Wobbly man. drones programmed some, by some wise guy. That's why we decided to send novice pilots into the scouting mission. Uh, now, all the, the pilots we send it. on this mission are, well, they didn't succeed. That's why I order you to immediately cancel whoa. your current activity and move over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know how it's done. Fly through the caverns, watch out for the drones, and destroy the control centers. Okay, I gotta get, I gotta get a con, con, con no, control it's center. Resetting. I'll do it. It's okay. all good. Game reset. Pixel. Uh, gameplay. Find and destroy the four control centers. The control centers are also control the doors to other parts of the caverns. They are guarded by uh, sentry drones, which will collide and also shoot once the control center is destroyed. Carefully guide your ship, because when you hit a wall, your ship will explode. Ooh. Left and right entrances to other parts of the cavern. Fly through the upper entrance to move hey, to buddy. a higher part of the cavern. Pixels, uh... Oh, that's okay. He likes, uh, Velcro. Who doesn't? <laughs> Fly to the lower entrance to move to a deeper part of the cavern. So those entrances don't match up to other screens. No, they don't. It seems... So it's a bit weird, like... There's some... I feel like this is a dead end, right? Oh. <laughs> that is. I bet it's a door that opens, though. So, um, I will take over if you... Oh, man. What is this terrible PDF right here? I'm going to use a different one. So it doesn't yeah, cut you off. can try. I'm pretty terrible today. I mean, these aren't... <laughs> but, I mean, all these are not necessarily games that I rock at. No? Okay. No. Okay, so page two at the top. Okay, it's kind of cut sounds off. good. And then I'm going to reset you because... Oh, thank you. So page two at the top. Uh, Ground Trooper says, this is pretty amazing for 2K. This is unbelievable for 2K. This is... Venlo is a great name for a planet as it's a town in the Netherlands. Ah, okay. Okay. When you, destroy, ah. when you destroy a drone, all drones will regenerate near the middle of the cavern. In later stages, the drones will regenerate much faster and shoot much faster. I can barely deal with them in this level. Um, destroying a drone gets you 20 points with a maximum of 400 points per stage. Destroying a control center gets you 100 points. You start the game with three ships in reserve. Every time you score 1,000 points, you win an extra ship. Oh, so that's why oh, I had to reset. reset for the game. Because yeah. I like you die, You just like fully die after a bit. That makes sense. Um, oh my god. Remaining control centers... And ships, okay. So, oh, so your ships are the are the, the white, white, and okay. then the control centers are the purple. Yeah, so different. They're just showing different types of ships as Come. options. So there's like white ships, there's red ships, uh, orange ships, green ships, purple ships. Each one sort of shoots a different angle. All uh, helpful oh. tips, though. I'll let you know about Damn these. It. Study the caverns and how they are connected. At the yes. same time, study the flying path of the fixed path drones. When you shoot a drone, be aware they can regenerate in the same cave or a nearby cave. Find cover on the bottom or ceiling of the caverns. Also, try to be in a position where you can dodge enemy shots. Yeah, they have patterns, so you can be safe. See that guy? Oh, okay. So if I... So this is more of a stealth game than anything, because these guys are... Dead. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so that's all the tips you, you're gonna get. Okay. That's all, you, that's all we got. Oh my god. I thought it was low enough. Harold T. said, is the author on this stream? No, he didn't respond, unfortunately, to um, oh, too my message in it's time. Cool game. Um, it yeah, it's unbelievable. Oh, I gotta be careful, more careful. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, thanks. Oh. It's got a little music. It's got excellent... Sometimes um, it'll appear right before you like, fly. What 
do I keep doing that? I gotta just go. I don't know what I gotta do on that level. Die. Sometimes he appears though, and you like crash right into him. Oh. And that's what's really amazing about this game. The enemies have a pattern that go from screen to screen, like they cross over. Like if you went. I can be safe here. If I went right now over to that, that next level, that guy's doing his sentry rounds on the other screen. It's great AI. Like, it's holy shit. Well, it's no, no really AI. Um, I guess it's great patterning, great, I guess. Great patterning. It's um, unbelievable. Um, they're very deadly. Their shots are too fast. Like, so fast. So it's more stealth. Oh! Well, our up key is a bit. Nice. Oh, that's true. That's, that's the, true. I, I, that's I countered why. that a few times where all of a sudden the ship just sticky. like flew up and died. It's a little <laughs> sticky. And so, there's not many. There's not many stealth games on the Atari. And this is one of the best examples, actually. Wow. Yeah. Well, you have to just sort of like be under the radar. And you got to study the patterns of these guys. And your ship moves very quick. So, you, it's very precise. So, oh my god. Whoa! Okay. Ah! Oh, I'm trying to stay up there! It's rough, man. Uh, maybe a shield type power would be cool. Replacing fire for a shield would probably be even better. Because firing doesn't help, they come right back. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa, that's rippy, man. Just blasts by. <laughs> yeah. Holy, it's a tough game. Tough, tough game. But it doesn't matter, he just doesn't, regens. It doesn't so. matter, that's why I... Oh my god, what am I doing? Uh, I got you. No, no, I got Okay, more. good, good. Still have life left. Thinking like a pickup, though, would either be time limited or an extra hit point. No thanks. No time limits, please, yet. This is hard enough as it is. Ah! Okay. Command Center 1, here we come. <laughs> Hi, Tari. How are you doing? Actually, this is probably the best 2K game I've ever played. Uh, well, I mean, this is a good answer to what we were sort of discussing exactly. today, right? It's like, this like, is... I would expect this to be a 4 or 8K game. And that's where, like, the design of these blocks and systems does not... I have no... I feel no different than, you know, than this for any other game. I mean, it's just yeah. like, there's, what, there's absolutely oh nothing wrong with the... With the look of it, the the playability of it is, is amazing. The way you move, everything is so good. Holy shit. Yeah, that should be exactly that's your key right there. And then just go up. Oh my god. Yeah, did I come out the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, is this a command thing? Or is this just a different guy? What's that button do? Uh you have to destroy this. <laughs> Hey, you just did it, That's man. That's one. One out of four. Ah! And then that other one's open now, I bet. And it stays. Okay, okay. Now the one on the right-hand side is probably open. Correct. So go So go down. Yeah. It is. Oh, sweet. I made progress. Okay, let's study the pattern. Okay. He doesn't go right to the bottom. Today. Well, I was gonna, oh, it was it was it was like somewhere between a like sneeze a... and a yawn, man. It was. Oh, he does shoot this guy. Oh my god. Yeah, the other one shot too. Okay. Two. Yes. <laughs> and you're on like one life, and you can yeah. for sure improve that. Yeah. Now that you can oh yeah. Out some of this stuff. Definitely. Wait till he does the bottom thing. Okay. And...
Okay, back back to the start. There's and something. There was else. a blockage over there before. Cool, and then the and then there's one that's back. Wow, this is where you're doing so much better at this game. Oh, oh what the? Okay, your turn. God, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do like even a fraction of what you did. So here, here is the answer. Yeah, exactly. Four. <laughs> I was like, safe. No. The discussion about oh, good games can't be made in 4K uh, without DPC plus. Oh, Let me just before I shoot my mouth off. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure. Make sure this isn't DPC plus, which I don't think it would be. I'm gonna hang out here. Yeah. No, nope, it's just 2K. Straight up 2K. Whoa. Game. Do you know it? These ah. there are these are PC ports of the author of this game already made. Um, pretty impressive. Okay. Check that out. No. Demon attack, Empire Strikes Back, Scramble, Halloween's Way, Invaders. So he's a PC programmer, but he goes for um, very simplistic graphics, like Atari level graphics. Very, very cool. Made for Retro Remix 2008 Big Competition. It contended in the category sequels that weren't. Pauline, the original Donkey Kong game. Very cool. Very impressive. Yeah. Oh, you did it. No! Hide in there. Uh, that's hard. <laughs> or go to the top, yeah. <laughs> it's just so... You gotta... It's all about the patterns. It, it really it's is. It's about studying them, then making your move. Safe for both of them along the bottom. Mm. Should have gone up. Should have gone up. Yeah. Oh, that's the screen. That's the screen you start on. Yeah. Man. That screen is the guy you died on. That's funny. Yeah, things are not linear in this game. Things are all over the place, and things connect up in ways that you wouldn't expect. Don't go in, don't go in. Go in when he's not there. He's just come back. Point. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. yeah. Some layers are fine. <laughs> okay, that guy just goes straight for you. You have to shoot that thing. There you go. Holy shit, shoots too. Holy shit. Holy shit, no. Oh, uh, but you did it. I got one. And it stays. So better than good. nothing. Okay, then there's this one. Yep. Yeah, you're right. You're just like he goes. Up. He goes kind of down. Does the down thing, and then and he goes up. Then he waited way too long. You're way too far away. Yeah. You have to get much, much closer. He doesn't get go to that little area there. Death. I got through one. It's nothing. That is pretty good. Tricky game. Very tricky. Definitely like. What am I? Requires a level of. There's a little bit of luck in this one. There's a little bit of skill. There's a little bit of like just learning. There's a little bit of the joystick that just <laughs> jams you up and kills you. There's a few obstacles here, yeah. but it's a cool game, for sure. Oh yeah, I want to finish this game. Maybe not today, but I want to finish this game. Whoa! Challenge. No! Why? Yeah, it's just for sure doable. Oh yeah, game. I got two out of four. See man, my tactic is just to hide in that bottom section, wait till he leaves. Yes. <laughs> I didn't wait long enough. See, I'd do that. I'd just go, go down to that bottom section and chill out. Because then you can like leave right away. You know, yeah. There you go. Go up. straight up, yeah, man. Did I just hang out? He's gonna kill you there. 
up enough there. Yeah, there you go. And then you can follow him like right away. Yes. And then the second that he kind of like talks around, you can just. <laughs> I don't even think you should be able to shoot in this game. But it doesn't hurt or make it better. It doesn't help. I, it resets the it, it resets the gut the guys. So it could be a tactic in the higher levels that you do want to reset. Oh, why do I keep doing yeah, that? Yes, the same you have like the same pattern. Yeah, and that's cool because you can like, fully hide. <laughs> yeah, there's definite safe areas around. Because yeah, you want to like follow him right behind him. Yeah, to get maximum. Because now push forward, yeah. Because yeah, there you go. yeah, it's kind of like you want to hide in the bottom than the left. This game's all about hiding. It is. It's total stealth game, which so few on the 2600. It's true. Yeah. I love stealth games a lot. Yeah. I really love... The best stealth game is a game called Dishonored, which is a very, Dishonored. very good game. Um, <laughs> it's, uh... I've yeah. never... I haven't played anything that's as good stealth-wise as that. I mean, the, the Splinter Cell games are not bad, but they've never been up my alley. Oh, yeah? And Dishonored is uh, a first person, and the cool thing is, is has you, a setting like it's all like you can you can blaze Tanya played that you can one. blaze through it. But the cool thing about Dishonored is that you can teleport because you, oh. you can teleport a certain distance because you yeah. have magic. So okay. it makes you can imagine how that affects stealth is, and the maps are oh, massive. Yes. So you can be like on the top of towers, and, and there's a there's an achievement called Ghost, which is that if no one sees you through your gameplay, um, and so that's what I tried to do. I put the setting up to the highest so that you get instantly killed, and there's like multiple ways to to defeat every level, mm. which is really fun. There's yeah. a, there's there's something like as it should be. There's 15 or 16 different like Why do we keep outcomes, doing that? and each one affects the story actually. Wow. So it's very cool, and we'll, and some will set things up and pay them off. It's one you of, start in a a jail area. Um, sort of. You're you're like a uh, uh, you're supposed to protect like the queen, and she gets killed, and then you're like dishonor. Right? Uh, the I see. <laughs> so swear Tanya played that game. I mean, there's a lot of games have stealth elements, but that's one of the ones that's really designed for stealth. Which is good. Um, Skyrim through stealth is fun. Although yeah, you, you can play a thief, right? So yeah. Um, and never, I've never played that. I've always played. Yeah, warrior, kill everything, get a big sword. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a much more fun game if you stealth it, for sure. Um... But at the end of the day, it's it's still just Skyrim. Like you know, it's <laughs> I sort of have mixed feelings about it. Oh, you can kill it, but it just regenerates. Oh, he is mad. Don't kill him. <laughs> Do not kill that guy. He will be very. Oh my God. Oh my God. I love that, that. Like you know, there's some benefit to that to dying after you defeat them. Cause, there you know, is. You get back to the back start. To like, yeah. It's not that much of a benefit, but it kind of is. It's cool that this is sort of the center of the thing. Is like where you regen. Yeah, it is. So far. Probably stays that Oh, way. I see. That's like that's where you want to be, is hang out in that yep. area. Very safe. Very close. Oh, so this one actually isn't as hard as... Oh, game. he shoots after you get it. Oh, I think he shoots uh, before as well. Yeah. Oh, I see what's going on. That's that's not too terrible. And it's terrible, but it's not too <laughs> terrible. It's not too terrible. Okay. Got two. I didn't get the third one yet. I've been meetings. This is the fifth game. Last one. Yeah, last one. Metal Gear Gradius. You're right, man. Damn the metal. It. I forgot. The Metal Gear games are very fun for stealth. I, mm. I do like Metal Gear games a lot for that. 
And I love that you often don't get actually combat weapons, and as soon as you shoot someone, everyone alerts to where you are. Um, and you, like, uh, have to have, like, you, you knock people out. Also, the oh, Thief. How did I not think of Thief? Thief is an amazing game. For stealth. Yeah, Thief is one of the earliest stealth games. It was so good. Although really hard. I, just, I, clocked, I put hundreds of hours into Thief, and I barely made it to the end. <laughs> like I made it, like, three, four levels in. Yeah. Why? No, no, not acceptable. Gotta get that third one at least. Oh no! Do you want me to do Why that? Why did this programmer. Uh, yes, please. Actually, I'm resetting the game. But still, why didn't the programmer make it reset with a button press when you when your game is over? Yeah, that's. I'd say for quality of life, that's for sure something that would be nice. Yeah, there's certain things that should. should be done. Every homebrew game. And everybody should follow the rules. Somebody should make up a rule set. It's like, these are the conventions. Please follow them for maximizing your... <laughs> Every time, man, safe spot. <laughs> maximizing your enjoyment of people playing your game. Yeah, just quality of life stuff is really, really a big deal. It is, yeah. Okay, do not go until you... Off the screen! So like in the action RPGs I play, um, uh, one of the quality of life things is being able to hold down control and like click and your item will automatically go from oh, one place to yes. the other. Otherwise yes. you're manually dragging things oh. forever. Or, or just, there's a move all. Yeah, you gotta just all. like fucking look so much yeah. better. Yeah, there's, there's just cer certain conventions that have to be followed. I, I think this guy put a lot of work into the mazes and the patterns yeah. of these robots because it is very specific and you think you're safe and this guy exits and you're like, oh, I'm done. Oh, oh no, no, I'm done. There's another guy. And same with this one. You're like, oh, good, I'm safe. No, 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 no. You're not safe. This is, I would Green say, guy. almost a memorizing sort of game. <laughs> oh, he is fast. He's fast. Okay, never mind. But he doesn't show. <laughs> well, it's not the end of the world because it resets no, you back. No. For the... I really want these extra lives to to help me get through this part. This game should definitely not be forgotten when during the uh, 2019 Atari Awards. This yeah, this is, has a, to be. this is a very cool game, man. This, this is very is well made. And very addictive. Yes. And because the thing that You feel you can do better, and you can. And it's one of those things, too, where you just, you know, because of the... Oh, Damn it! Because of the pattern-oriented thing, it's very much like you should be able to beat it. Like it's you like should. it's totally your fault. Yeah, you can't blame like some RNG <laughs> no, thing. No, there you know? is no randomness to this game. What's so? F uh, I whatsoever. love that it's like the first guy and it keeps killing you. You have to encounter him over and over again. Yeah, and and the problem is as soon as you want to like rush. Uh -uh. Yeah, you do not rush this game. This is about stealth and slowness Patience. and not doing that over and over again. That's that's the issue. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you the problem is is you want to you want to do it quickly. Yeah, and there's no need to do that you quickly. Can't. Most games you have to do it quickly. This one is nope. Take your time. Study the patterns. Nope. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, oh no. Where's my pattern for that guy? Just get to that bottom middle part right away. Yeah, pretty much. Repetition, man. It's all about repetition. Yeah. <laughs> repetition of dying. Oh, my, my, my dad has a six-year-old daughter, and um, he's, he, he's like the most unathletic guy that I know. Yeah. And he started doing, she wanted to do soccer, and yeah. they had like a low staff 
for coaching. Oh, so yeah. they asked him, they're like, would you mind coming in and coaching? You see some drills. They're like six-year-olds, whatever. Yeah. So now he's been doing it, and she doesn't even like it. So she stopped wanting to go, and he's <laughs> been committed to this thing, and he's oh, such a nice no. guy. So he's currently coaching these, like, this... six-year-olds. It's something that he never wanted to do. So funny. And it's like, I'm like, oh, it's totally it's like a place he would end up to. And I asked him, like, do you like it? He's like, it's really... It's, it's different, you know? <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> He's such a positive guy. I was like, oh. it made me laugh, though. It's how it goes, right? You try to do something to connect with your daughter, and then it turns out that, like, you're now you're just coaching a bunch of kids. And he's getting it's, closer uh, yeah. to... I want to go back to the bottom? Yeah. You just want to get to that bottom one, right? So the yeah. bo bottom right. So, like, now I just push over and just hide. Okay, yeah, and then it's to the top. Yeah, I believe so. No, no <laughs> the bottom. bottom. But that's okay, that's yeah. an easy one to... Yeah. Hey. Dude. Ah! It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's I'm fine. happy with one life for two of those. Okay, just patience, take it slow. Patience. Take it slow. Nice and slow. This game rewards patience. Yes. There are some times where you have to rush and you have to get to a spot like there. You have you to get there. You have to be there. precise, but at the same and time. And then go quickly over to there. And relax. And then go quickly to there. That's right. And then, and then wait. For this so character. The, the green guy goes up. And then I forget. Okay, so I don't... I don't know. No. Let's it's see. It's gotta what... be up that way. No, it's, no, not. it's not. Interesting. So we gotta. Damn it. We have to figure out where this next one is, and it's not obvious. Hmm. I've been keeping my eye open for like so. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Okay. So it's gotta be. Interesting. Okay, so if we go down, that's where we've already been here, and it can't that be goes here. Goes to a dead end. It can't that's be where here. Where we came from. So it has to be the other way. Is there a path? That Something has to have opened. Interesting. Uh, no. It's up there. Shit, man. Hide in the bottom. Yep. Okay. Now what's this Also, guy's? I think you're, the gig, gig is going to go, you probably want to go and hide on the left. Yes. He doesn't go to the left at all. Exactly. Okay. So right there, after he does... So he's going to kind of do this. And so. then he's going to go up. Yes. Okay. Let's see his top pattern. Okay. Does the left. Right. So, so now you okay. want to go. Yeah, right there. As soon as he comes down off the right hand side. And that's the spot to be for sure. Yeah. And there you now. Go. Can I make it all the way? Yes. Sick. Oh yeah, and then now... <laughs> Let's do this. We got, we got yeah? this. Okay, one more. Because now we know what we're doing. Now we know what we're doing. Hey man. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you soon, Splendid Nut. And yeah, good man. luck on uh, working on Chaotic Grill. Yeah, keep, and finishing that off. Keep, keep us up to date. Keep the push going, man. Yeah, it's going amazing. Whoa, that was close. Whoa, that was close. Oh, that was God. I need these lives. I need these lives. <laughs> I need it. doesn't shoot there, I've noticed, for some reason, when you come in. No, he's, you have like a sort of like a, a weird little grace period on I that. think you do, when coming into a new room. Maybe, maybe not. Unless you fire. Go around, and then before he gets to the other side, trap him in there, and then do that. Oh 
Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. Ooh. I'm not gonna say this one's easy, but it's this one's, cer this it's one. certainly uh, much more doable. Like it's, it is. it's 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 much more predictable. Yeah, and he gives you a lot of room. And so we know where where the fourth one there is. It is. Through yep. There it is. Oh right? shh. Yeah. 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 That's the fourth one. Okay. So, I think I remember where the other one was. I mean, it's so... Yep, it's there, there, and then it's a loop up. Right yeah. after this, I think, or very shortly after this. Yeah, yeah right there, there we go. And then, honestly, this one's this actually... This pretty easy. It's, 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 yeah. It's like that other one. But it does yeah, come so, down and peak So, a right bit. now. Yeah. yeah. It does come down and peak a bit, but not enough. Go. Stay there. Shit. Up there. Oh, he comes out. He's a little bit more dodgy. He's a little bit more oh erratic, God. so he makes his way around. Okay, not the end of the world. Nope. Um, so this you last one is... S the same. You just gotta go back. to the last one, yeah. So, like, you go down. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. And then you gotta go past this... You have to manipulate them. Oh my god, what's happening? Holy fuck. This is not a lot of room for hiding. So you come up here? Yeah. Oh my does. god. So you gotta go does down. come here? I don't think so. I'm just gonna go for it now. No! Nope. Damn it! Oh, he doesn't come there, though. No, he doesn't. I only have one life. Stakes have never been higher. I haven't been. <laughs> This is my last life, and I don't really know the patterns of these guys. This is... I would not be. No! Okay. Okay. We're going to leave this. Yeah. For 12-hour marathon. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fucking ninth... Or, or another episode. The ninth game that we'll throw in there. Yep. So many 12-hour marathons. That's a good game. That is a good... That's probably the best 2K game I've ever played. That's an amazing the, game, dude. The best, smallest game, one of them. Very, very addictive. So let's run through it. Chaotic Grill off the top of the show. Unbelievable. Lots amazing of fun. Amazing game. I struggled because I just don't know the mechanics. But... Yeah, once you get it and you know patterns and how to manipulate them into moving where you want them to move, it's a lot easier. Flapple Bird. That's shovelware, unfortunately. It's sort of it again. So, it, it it harkens back to those uh, library games for me. Yeah. But it really feels like that's totally my relationship to a game like that. You're like, oh, we'll play this a few times. Okay, next. Like it's it's yeah. really it really is a one shot. It's like the equivalent of those I don't know those comic books you buy that are like ten pages, and you're like, oh, I <laughs> that's guess it. that's it. That's all we got for our money. Okay, yeah. new. S some people compared it to the type of games that were put out in the early 80s that caused the video game crash yeah it's like anybody can make a game now let's spit it out charge 30 dollars for it put it in a box people will buy it and it's like just overwhelming people with garbage games and people then going no this is a terrible market but unfortunately fortunately people don't there is no there is no um Flappo Bird is the Dark Souls of uh, yeah, <laughs> fucking... terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, and Flappy, um, a good version of, Absolutely. of Flappy Bird. That one is very playable. I got up to 150 something. Hell yeah, so. man. Um, it shows what happens when you do some scale ability. Like it yeah. feels, you also feel better about yourself when you walk away with yes. 100 and something points <laughs> instead of two, four. Three. Yeah, no, we didn't make it to four. I don't think, did we? No, I don't you think so. three three. Points. If you can't even make it to four, it tells you like how where you're at in life. Yeah. You uh fourth game, you can't win. Um interesting mechanic. It they didn't take it very far. You can win. It's very easy. <laughs> you just wait for the timer to go out and yeah. I think you get won one, if you don't die. Like Yeah, get one 
uh, snowflake, and it's easy to win. And you're good. Or you can just Iron Man your way to the yep, top. Fly off the screen, and you're fine. <laughs> Caverns, unbelievable game. Yeah, amazing. Unbelievable stealth game, pattern game, it, the control, the movement, the the goal of it. Like, nothing it has an in end here to it feels too. like. Um, it all feels polished. Yeah, nothing like, feels like. I mean, it's it's just to circle back to what we t started the show on. I mean, this is as good as any game. There's no, oh. you know what I mean? That's the thing. I'm like, I don't give a shit if about Witcher 3 or friggin' Red Dead Redemption and fucking oh. lights this, and all this stuff. It's this like, presented me a challenge. It's like, yeah. you have four things to get and it gets harder and harder. And, and it takes skill and you just got to do it. I mean, skill, memorization, um, pattern recognition. Um, you have to move really quickly in some of these. Yeah. I think we are simple mammals. <laughs> Soccer, it's been played forever. Yeah. It's not complicated. All in goal. Done. That's it. You and get a point. Most sports are a variation on that. Yeah. Tennis is it's a little bit more complicated, but bit. ultimately it's the same thing. You just, you, you know. miss the ball, you lose. And, and I mean, and these are the things that engage people for really as long. I mean, chess has been around for hundreds of years, far more complicated, but not that complicated. There's nothing, there's no graphics in chess. No. You just You just play the game. Yeah. Patterns, recognition. And deep thinking. Ultimately, gameplay is everything. Do I like playing this game? Yes. Um, do yes. I want to hit the button and get through through? <laughs> no, probably not. You no. know, maybe for like thirty seconds, but not for. Yeah. You it's know. a casual game. Hell yeah! And this, this is this is a very complex game, but simple. My my simple observation is that any genius has no fat in it. You know, yes. Anything that's genius yeah. has zero fat. Yeah, like, scaled I, right down. Whether that's a novel or a song or a stand-up comedian. And I yep. do think like one of the design sentences I always try to go by for anything I'm designing is strong, simple, specific. Yep. Is it strong, is it simple, and is it specific? Because strong, complicated, and you yeah. know, is not necessarily great. And that and there's an elegance to simplicity, which is what we strive for. I mean like yeah. he didn't have to program any AI. No, that's that's that that's becomes part of the key. thing. That's the key in this one. Why he could get down to two K, because those robots, it's like two seconds of up, two seconds of right, two seconds of down. Fire if you see him on the same level. Yeah, that's the whole robot mechanism. And, and Nathan brings up a great point where he says bad games didn't cause the crash. It was bad management, especially at Atari. Yeah, Atari but those are interrelated. <laughs> yeah, Atari could have made it through um the crash a lot better than they did that's for sure but people weren't buying atari games at 40 dollars because there was garbage games flooding the market and the stores dropped the price on all all the games because they they weren't selling or they were being returned the bad games were being returned so like we have too many games now we have to drop the price and the way the agreement for games worked is that they only sent back the money to the management or to the company they only sent back the money if the game sold so there was no risk at all for the retailers and that's the only way retailers could do it yeah. um i believe that's how it worked so they sent all these games back and they sent a whole bunch of atari games back and then Atari's like, oh my god, we can't sell games because everybody thinks games are shit. Yeah. And they're really bad quality and they're selling for the same price. There's a lot of things that happened. But and I think that's the biggest factor was a flood of bad, churned out games. And people were starting to think that's what games were now. And they were just done. They were done with it. And there is a long tradition of startups kind of getting so far and not knowing what to do next, you know? It's like, if we look at the history of, like, McDonald's, it's like these mom-and-pop kind of guys made these great hamburgers, and it was, you know, a capitalist who came in and, you know, was like, this was, and marketed and made McDonald's what it is. Yeah. Not to say that that's, like, what this is, but it is one of those things where if you are Atari and you are kind of the pioneers of this sort of game revolution, the odds of you then being able able to continue to sort of crush the market forever because because people start, start replicating your business model and more efficiently taking unfortunately. advantage of it or doing it more efficiently like um like activision really did a great job of of doing it better and the third other third party companies are doing a great job at manipulating the system 
That's and right. undercutting you and, and wrecking your business model, even though you're doing good games. And s Nathan Strum put it a better way. It was more of an overcorrection of a saturated market than a crash. Probably splitting hairs, though. No, you're absolutely yep. right. You bring up a great point. And Thrust and says, current Atari is trying for even worse management. Oh, my yeah. God. I don't, I don't talk about Atari the new Atari I didn't on this even, show. I didn't even know that there was a current Atari. It's a mess. It's, it's garbage. They're putting out a new console, but and they're saying it's coming out, but they a, a, they show you nothing. They like don't tell you anything. 2020 like release? Late 2020. Wow. Uh, it'll be... Or is it after or before the Intellivision? Question. When's the after. last um, uh, console before. they released? Oh, it was a Jaguar, which was... Uh, early 90s and it did do, it did very poorly i think it was really hard to program for Eesh. um it's not it a had great. great capabilities but i know. mean ne uh, next gen but market is a different they're, different they're, deal yeah pretty much they're making a computer in a box that's all consoles are that's now. how they are yeah and it's, they have hard drives you download onto it's hilarious yeah. and they're lost leaders as well these consoles but Atari's not selling it as a loss leader. They're not banking on the games, making up the the money. Um, like PS4. Yeah. Uh, the only one that doesn't sell as a loss leader is um, Nintendo's, I believe. They sell it at actual price. But PS4's sell for lower than it costs to make the thing because they get revenue from the games. But this is the other crazy thing about this is that like in this generation of gaming... It almost is silly to have a console to some degree. It's almost done. It's because dead. it's like you're just downloading it onto a hard drive anyways. And, there, I mean, you may as well just have a PC and you can plug whatever well, controller you want into it. There's still a market for it because of the way they're structured. They oh, sell sure. cheap consoles that are subsidized by game sales. Um, and if you have to buy a PC, that's not cheap. That's like, a good get point. A decent, to get a that's decent a console. That's a very good point. The hardware is very specific. Like we, we and there's exclusive releases too, some for PS4 and oh, that's all that stuff. True, that's and market so, manipulation. So there's you know? stuff like that, but it, but I think what I, what my bigger point is that it's like what what it actually is now is just data on a hard drive, which is, is which is very little to differentiate a console from a PC other than manipulation of costs. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's just a different system to go through and. Um, Nathan Strom, as Nolan always says, razors and razor blades. Razor blades are where the profit's at. You make consoles to sell games, not hardware. Makes complete and sense, And the new Atari, and they dubbed it, they called it the VCS, which is so annoying, because that's the VCS. It's it's hilarious, because that's, in some ways, the opposite of um, of that is what Apple did, is the re yes. understanding that hardware was something that was going to be important. Yes. And because that's, that's what made the iPod so significant. Yep. That's what made, really, that's their model is like, let's give you a prepackaged hardware that they, will just do they everything. Sell high end hardware for a premium price. That's correct. But it is hard, high end hardware. It is very good hardware. And it lasts for a long time. Yep. I think the lifespan of an Apple is longer typically than a PC, which is it a. Is. Which well, makes it a good... Uh, probably because uh, to upgrade, you have to spend more, a correct. lot more money. <laughs> but it does last longer, and they provide upgrades longer for the yeah. OSs. And PCs I, and are cheaper for more hard, uh, for more uh, horsepower. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're more interchangeable. I yes. like... One thing I do like about Apple is that it's like all of the stuff has been integrated. Like, it's... The, the, it's the, going to the, work. The video card was meant to go with this motherboard, which was yeah. meant to go... And it's, a, it's a good environment for a lot of people. Not for me. No. I'd rather... <laughs> I, I have a little bit more time to invest in fiddling with hardware, and I have knowledge. A lot of people are like, I don't know anything about computers. I just want yeah. my program to work. Just my like, my Photoshop just needs to work. That's what we need. We want the yeah. laptop just to freaking open up. But it's so interesting that that's now... Now I think we're at this weird place with games where we don't know, like, what oh, what is this hardware? Like... You know what? <laughs> but the next gen, maybe not next gen, but the one after that, they're almost there, is that you won't need hardware. It'll all be streaming. And there's a lot of emerging companies that are now... That makes sense. I mean, They have the hardware in uh, data centers that are churning it out and just streaming your game to you, which is another a whole other level of control over games. Like yes. You will not even own a game at that point. Well, yeah, you need... It's... it's um, Games as a service. I, you pay a rental fee 
you you don't even own the game you can't transfer it it's it's just a service well the game i play path of exile which is my favorite um we just play on the server there's no like you download a thing but it's constantly updating every and you can't play offline all it, multiplayer massive multiplayer online games are has all have always been server dependent and it's like all, all the way back to ultima online yeah. it's like the server shuts down everything's gone it's just, like, you cannot play it one player on your own uh, the game doesn't fill in NPCs for your team. No, and it's constantly, like, it literally updates, like, every week. So it's, like, y if you d uh, download it offline, it would be useless. And those, that is the advantage. Yes. Of multiplayer, massive multiplayer online, is that you get a new experience. It's a constant evolution. For your money, as you should. Uh, no one wanted to release the 5200 in 1979 and sell it at a loss to dominate the market. Warner didn't want to do that. They shipped it initially as the 400-800 computer and delayed the 5200 for three years. Imagine how much different the market would have been if the 2600 was off the market in 79 and the 5200 was a console that ro rode the wave of the arcade craze. That would have been game-changing. Like, the 5200 is so much more advanced. Than yeah. the 2600, especially in 79. That's unbelievable. It's, it still would have been garbage with those controls. If they were good controls, like they shipped with garbage. garbage and it's controls. a weird thing because it's like, I feel like technology is always a step behind where we're at. You know what I mean? It's like they're going to, oh, yeah. you know, and that's the weird part is that so they, they have to balance it with consumer spending habits. That's right. And they need to be able to scale at every, what, eight years, six yeah. years, four years. And so like, it's not in their benefit to release the, the, the best possible thing. No, especially know? when you dominate the market and there's nobody else competing. Then, Why? put out something beforehand when 2600 games are selling like crazy yeah. still it i mean from a com company point of view yeah it made sense to do that yeah and then uh, uh adino like, brings up a good point which is probably so popular because they stuck with it for so long yeah they were able to push it to the very 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 limits and we're, st we're still pushing the limits and we're still doing it man that's <laughs> with, why we're here with arm cartridges and yeah it's, it's just like this show wouldn't exist if that wasn't the case. Which yeah, is we'd so still wild. be playing old games from the '80s, and it would just wouldn't be not a thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's why this system is so. Uh, it's lasted this long. Yeah. Anyway, we feels that feels like your ear off. Yeah, that feels like a <laughs> like a decent ending point for today. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for sticking around and chatting and, yeah. and having a really good discussion about. Uh, uh, gaming in general, um, I love those discussions and theorizing and talking, figuring about out it. all the stuff. And dude, Ground Trooper, thank you so much, Ground Trooper. Tw ten months. Wow, that is awesome. I think I did three six nine for the um, different subscriptions, so it'll have to be a twelve month the next one, so a year. Ooh, the annual. Need a new badge? No, not a ten. It'll be a twelve. Twelve months. Um, and I think it only allows you to do three, six, nine, and 12. Oh, okay, like cool. You can't do one thing, but, uh, I do have to start making the 12. I think somebody's at 11, maybe. Whoa. Um, so thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, Ground Trooper, Nathan Strum, Dianoid, uh, Thrust. I supposed to. I supposed to. A militant Buddhist was kicking around. Splendid, Splendid Nuts. Nut. Uh, yeah. Mallard Games. Cab73. Yeah, Kev73. Uh, known him since high school. Really? Yeah, RC70. Dan ABC. Yeah, Dan ABC was in and out. He was at work or something. Mallard. Yep, Mallard Games. Azure. Uh, oh, didn't even see him come on the screen. Azure6502. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've read out some of his comments. but For uh, sure. We just yeah. didn't necessarily... Thanks for jumping in here. Mr. Fix, did we say? And Paul Map Bob. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Map Bob stu stuck around. He said two things, but you know. Yeah, he's very. He he's got a lot of specific questions <laughs> that Paul Map bought. Oh, you're very welcome. We like to stream at Europe Europe friendly hours. So it's easier for when, us. It actually. is actually easier. It, it's very good at the beginning of the day. Because I was working um, a job for a while, and then I'd have to rush off of the job, and it was yeah. always it was actually getting pretty stressful because it was like I just didn't want to be late for the show, and like yeah. the and I was bussing from quite a far away. We we're doing it three in the afternoon or something yeah oh, oh no we were doing like five o'clock or something oh, um because my work good. ended at like 
I think actually we did 5.30 and my work ended mm. at 4.30 and it was exactly an hour to bus. There are many <laughs> oh, times right. I was obviously like almost running to sort yeah, of get here on good. time. So this is so much easier and it's nice because now we have the day to do our stuff. So I think we'll stick with the year of hours unless oh, my life definitely. gets crazy. And we can't do that on f um, Friday with Tanya because she works uh, 9 to 5 so we can't do that. But that's only one out of four shows. So yeah. three out of three out of four shows are going to be Europe friendly and us friendly too. Yeah. Thrust says good show, good talk, good games mostly. Yeah. Um, yeah, except for one, and you can't win was a bit light, but uh, well, yeah. Even, that, we, even the even the I bad. like to mix it up. I like to make Not, sure that we have some some heavy hitters and some some light ones that we can you know analyze and check out. And, it sure makes you f realize how spoiled you are when you play a game that like hasn't yeah. doesn't work and like that's not even as bad. Like when you get into like controller stuff oh, that doesn't that's work. Bad. Then then you just it just is like fuck this, man, I'm out. Yeah, you can't even play the game if you, even if you wanted to. It's like frustrating to play. We've only encountered that a couple times. Yeah. I think I can't remember the the name of the game, but it was like it was for us like we wanted to play it yeah it's like oh these controls are there was terrible. one game that you was the oh, high score one that minor was, 24 yeah which that's was an like old game well the cool thing about yeah. that that was where it almost looped around to like being a feature the frustrating controls was. was part of the game it was like, challenge, the challenge yeah which was like i'm like i don't know if i'd want to scale my game that way <laughs> like that wouldn't be like my no, design no, no. choice but it actually worked out so it's not always bad a lot of games especially platformers back in the 80s and Ooh. 90s that was the biggest problem like the the hit detection boxes were so off that you your foot when landing it had to be precise on one to one pixel and it was so maddening that they couldn't just fit fix this hit detection it's like if you touch it you've landed that's period end of story but you're just like falling through platforms even in in nes games that happened a Ooh, lot. Yeah. It's like I hit that platform. Minor twenty five hundred nine was horrible, and there are two of them. Yeah, yeah it's terrible. So yeah, it's probably a good show to watch again if you did miss, because we had a lot of really good discussion off the throughout the whole show. Well, yeah, I really liked it. So thanks for tuning in. We'll be back on uh, Friday with who's up, who's up on Darcy. Oh, cool. I believe so. Let's check out the games. I've got a shortcut now to directly to the game. Oh, that's Makes awesome. It easier. Oh, and we won. You can't win. We did. Um, so we're going to do some more patch uh, challenges, Activision oh, patch sick, challenges. Man. I've got Stampede and Keystone Capers up because I know I'm going to be able to do Stampede in one one go. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and then, and then Keystone Capers is a little bit more challenging. And that's, I guess, in case you blast through. I know I'm going to blast through Stampede. And, hey, and there's never, other ones I can do know. as well. Yeah, I never know. It might be harder than I think. That's the problem. The second you think you're going to nail something, it's like, don't say it out loud because it's never going to happen. Yeah, don't. It's That's always what's happening. Pride before the fall. Yep. And uh, then the show after that, we're going to play QB, which is a cool game and made by um, Andrew Davey, Davies, Davey, uh, who we were talking about saying like, ah, oh, I'm done with games. I'm not making any yeah. 2600 games. Because I don't... <laughs> three hours of stint. Three, oh, I hope not. I hope not. It is a very repetitive game. Um, and also Cave In, which I hope doesn't make my system go shuddery. Um, this is a game for you. Because it's a uh, kind of RPG. You're in caves. You're running around. Very mazy. There's dark areas. I hate dark areas. Hey, man. I'm so in. So this is all I'll on you. It. And then a couple weeks after that, on the... July 12th is a Stella, Stellathon, named by Dan AVC. He said, hey, why not call it Stellathon? Well, so that sounds perfect. 12-hour Stellathon, uh, marathon fundraiser for Stella. And uh, Dude, if we gotta, if we got to draw maps, I'm fucking in. Okay, Love it helps it. if you draw a map. We'll be drawing a map. It's quite extensive. It's I like really that, big. I like that kind of stuff. I have a decent memory for that stuff, too, so combined with a map, it'll be awesome. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I've been navigating fucking digital mazes my whole life. It's really <laughs> silly. Oh, well, Constant. it helps now. It's coming back. It really is it's coming back. back. And far off in the distance, we'll be broadcasting live from the Portland Retro Gaming <sighs> Expo on mm. October 18th, 19th and 20th. That'll be a lot of fun. I love that. We just uh, came back um, this weekend from the Vancouver. Totally forgot to talk about that. Oh, shit. The Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. Oh, I didn't um, even know about that. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, the stuff that I need now for my systems 
is either too expensive <laughs> yeah. or too rare. So you either don't yeah. see it, and if you do see it, it's too much. So I didn't buy anything. Actually, I did buy something, but they're the seven. It's the flashback controllers. I thought, oh, these are really cool little mini controllers, but unfortunately, they're wired for NES. Oh. Um, even though they have the pinout for the twenty six hundred, so they're totally useless. And I haven't found anything online about rewiring them for um, DB nine twenty six hundred. So if anybody has any thing to for rewiring that, I doubt it. It's probably all internals and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then we have some Dan Kitchen games at some point, and we also have the Quadtari, um, which has been postponed Ooh. because they are gone back to the drawing board to add more features into it. Um, so we'll see when that comes about, and then we'll be playing Quad Games, Galaga, Wizard of War Arcade, which all take advantage of the Quadtari. Um, and Atari box. is coming to say goodbye, man. Yeah. Atari Isn't there an is NES it. to Atari converter cable? Oh, maybe there is. Maybe, but it's not an NES end. That's the problem. It's a DB9 end wired for NES uh, emulation boxes. The Wi-Fi card, we talked about that off the top That's of right. the show. Um, we, I will have that working at some point. Yeah, we'll let you know how it goes, man. Yep. I'm, cur- I'm excited to find out if it's... And we'll as... do it live, and we'll see uh, it load games without me taking the card out. Without Ooh. turning off the Atari is my goal. Welcome to 2020. That's right. We're in the future with the Atari 2600. So thanks for hanging out with us once again. We'll see you on Friday. And I'll see you next at week. At 12 p.m., one hour later than today. 12, 3, 7. 12 o'clock, 3 on Eastern, 7 p.m. GMT. He'll be back next Wednesday. Au revoir. Bye-bye. See you next time. <laughs>